the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Prophesy to yourself and say, I receive understanding. Say it again, I receive understanding. Turn it into prayer. Lord, grant me great understanding tonight. Talakosi katabaria koshi katabalondusia. Jebres kosia katambaskola hariakata. Understanding. The entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding unto the simple. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight I'm going to be touching on a number of things and then we'll pray. Um. As I have traveled, especially in recent times, I have, I have been humbled, let me tell you sincerely, at, at the prophetic words that the Lord spoke to me many years ago. I have seen it in regions, campuses, and I am truly humbled to see that when God speaks, um, He is reliable. It pays to trust him. It may not look like it, but if you trust him, he will surprise you. Hallelujah. And I was sharing, I think, with our dear school of ministry students yesterday during the lectures, and I was telling them that one of my personal goals in this life is to inspire my generation to love God, to seek him, and to be revealers of his possibilities this is my inspiration to my generation i hope that one day a generation will look at my life and be inspired to love god to seek him and not just to stop there that their lives will become portraits of the possibilities that a man can demonstrate if and when he's one with god are we together now and so all the teachings that we bring here are an attempt a contribution you can call it to open us up and help build that we rise to that point where we not only know god but we understand his ways it's, it's very arrogant for me to have to be the one saying this but let me tell you sincerely i love and i care about every one of you from the depth of my heart it, it shouldn't be me saying it but i say it because it's the truth it matters to me that your knowledge of god is rich it matters to me that your conformity to the fullness of all that he is and he represents is rich in your life it matters to me also that you gain intelligence spiritually that you come to a point where your life is furnished with thorough understanding you are not unfruitful in the knowledge of the truth you can know god as a person and still be unfruitful in the knowledge of the systems of the kingdom you hear me say this i will keep repeating it until it becomes your convictions because the operation of god on earth in as much as the bible has revealed to us is systemic are we together god is the god of systems when you encounter his person then he grants you the ability to understand his ways his methodology his systems the results that we seek are dependent on our comprehension and engaging of the systems accordingly are we together so on one hand we are coming into the knowledge of God, intimacy here and there, but then we must understand his ways. Listen, let me tell you this. Our destinies, the quality of our destinies on earth, not only depend on the love of God for us, 
but our ability to understand his ways of doing things are we together now to be able to replicate his reality in our environment that's the whole idea of kingdom come it's not a mystery is to be able to sustain the ability to make your life become an expression in every area every area remember there's a scripture we've been playing around with very recently the bible says second peter chapter 1 and verse 3 it says according as verse 2 says grace and peace be multiplied to you you know through the knowledge of him of our god and of our lord jesus christ verse 3 says according as his divine power hath given us how many things all things that pertain unto what apostle peter would have just stopped and said his divine power has given us all things that would have been enough but he says those all things are divided into two categories the matters that pertain unto life and the matters that pertain unto godliness everyone say after me life godliness say one more time life godliness there are matters that pertain unto godliness for instance your spiritual growth right the the issues of the spirit when i open you up to the dimensions of the spirit the anointing understanding the ways of god digging into the boils of the spirit to be able to come up with the things that help you to conform better to become a spiritual man these are the things that pertain unto godliness but there are things that pertain unto life the well-being of your children matters that pertain unto life is that true the ability to not be under the yoke of this godless system that has designed a structure to strangle any intention to be serious with god there is a system intentionally built that's what is captured in the mystery babylon a system that was built with intelligence intended to frustrate any desire to be serious with god and so the system operates in many ways by making men busy by making men poor by making men mediocre by making them frustrated to lack a sense of purpose that those who are not of the world will continue to pay tribute in cash and in kind with their time and with their lives but there is a bailout system and the bible says they are matters that pertain unto life no matter how anointed you are when you watch your child being driven out of school it will frustrate your christian experience now i have said it again and again we do not serve god just because of tea and bread listen very carefully we don't serve god because of the things that he gives us we serve him because of who he is and our love for him but he has so designed in his wisdom that in serving him you encounter other things the ability to attend to the matters of life because in doing so you demonstrate that he is a good father number two in doing so you demonstrate dominion number three in doing so it affords you the time to further commit yourself are we together there is a conspiracy it's always been there but it's been reinforced again this system of satan occupying men their time their life to never allow them serve god do you know why many of the people we call god's generals were powerful they gave god time that is the commodity that satan is fighting today in our generation time you never know anything without giving it time you meet a full animal he can whisper something to his cows and they will behave themselves because he spends time with them you don't wake up and come one morning and tell a cow move left these are animals our time with god is under attack hear me carefully our time with god that is the principal factor that sponsors our knowledge of him is under serious attack and if a generation does not stand up to say satan what are you doing our children you see these little kids running up and down they will no longer have time for god there is a system that is derailing men away 
and is doing it in a very subtle way it's not happening overnight you check the schedules of the average man there is nothing about god there aside from one religious devotion that is done in 10 minutes god is not you can't give god 10 minutes of your time and want to host his glory you come back to sleep you are tired and it's not like you were doing anything kingdom satan system he manipulates men like he's playing a chess something is wrong brothers and sisters this is i'm starting tonight with a clarion call something is wrong our generation really needs to seek the lord but not under the conditions that the devil has put us in you're not going to seek the lord when your rent is about killing you you will just dance around and give thanks but not to seek the lord it's amazing how we have to sit down and specially create time for god we don't specially create time for money we are seeking it all our lives we don't specially create time for fame we don't specially create time for a living but when it comes to god there has to be an extra effort it says as for me and my house it didn't say we'll be christians we will it's a commitment as for he was not saying as for a pastor who is now into this body called ministry say as for me and my house i have made a decision that i will serve the lord our generation is under serious threat look how hard the devil has made it for an average young man to be established even at age 40 he has not even started establishment if he's to live 80 years that's half of his life gone and don't forget that when he's 60 70 his strength may not be there again and the bible says that we should serve god in the days of our youth so he rubbishes the days of our youth so that we spend our entire life looking for what to eat what to drink trying to educate our minds trying to earn a living and then we give him some little time devotions here one program one emotional crusade here we will never it's impossible to institutionalize god to a generation that way if we want our children and our children's children to serve the lord let me tell you we must make god a big deal in our generation not a factor you add to your life if you are a christian but the basis of your living i'm concerned especially about our teenagers most of them don't know god again ask them when we were teenagers one young man who is not even serious just a sunday school goer can recite 30 verses it doesn't matter whether he loves god or not but you ask one of these are young ones to recite even john 3 16 that unbelievers who were passing around church knew you ask them and hear what they will tell you but ask them what is the latest app the latest computer game huh the latest uh, what do we call it all these funny things they are not wrong in themselves but something is happening to a generation if we don't pay attention we will cry in old age and say lord did i fail my generation these are my contemplations the level of non-attention to god is becoming a thing of concern we are going to churches sundays churches are full with members wednesday activity i'm talking of seeking the lord not as a profession for a man of god where he gets salary at the end of the month as for me and my house i will serve the lord most people who serve the lord is because they have given up on the matters of life there is no hope of sending any child to school there is no hope of anything they know they would die whether or not they serve the lord so they say okay since i have two years left let me just try to do something no our generation has brought an option be poor and fail and serve the lord or be blessed and be occupied trying to make a living who gave us that option as for me 
and my house i will serve the lord that one day i will come to your house on a weekday and hear sounds of worship from your gate not cassette you and your four children are serving the lord and i say by two o'clock i thought you should be earning a living and he said he showed me another system now we are serving the lord and visitors pull their mouth while they are languishing in the squalor of rebellion and watch you say pastor alpha you are serving the lord jedediah is 12 years and his teenager friends are there all around smoking their destinies away and this child is there serving the lord it is selfishness and wickedness that makes us to forget the generation that is coming i'm sorry to say it and i i love our parents we have many of our elderly people here i love them but one of the mistakes that our fathers made was they were very selfish they did not remember that a generation was coming so all they did was to educate their minds and look for food to eat there's hardly any heritage given to a young man every young man starts almost from ground zero spiritually financially the time a young man should use building his spirit is fighting warfare because the chains that have held him at 30 he must spend one year contending for victory as for me and my house i can't claim it for everybody but as for me and my house we will serve the lord how many of us here got born again directly by our parents how many of you some of us were just around and salvation by the mercy of god met you in one sunday school some of you salvation met you at the point of death did you know that for many of us we never had the talk about god we had godliness in a religious way every time there was bible study something happened a sound in the zinc demotion that was imminent or something that sponsored some emotional reaction say as for me and my house say as for me and my house i will serve the lord are we together yes it matters that we make this decision right now that we will serve the lord we will serve the lord i've been doing a lot of counseling lately especially for our dear ones that are getting married and i look at them my first concern is will your home serve the lord will your life serve the lord let me tell you there is a wicked babylonian financial system there that was designed to make sure you don't serve the lord how can one man do five jobs because he's trying to pay rent it's a cause you wake up by six do a job to 12 and satan makes sure his tip and comes from there and then you start another one till four and your body is weak but you know if you don't do this you will not eat well and you start another one and in the next five years that man dies and leaves seven children look at our dear mothers okay, something is wrong go listen to me i came tonight to talk to you from the depth of my heart it's a vow i built myself that's the truth you bail yourself through a commitment of obedience but my job is to share this with you that if we don't wake up and join ignorant people or this proud religiosity that only focuses on the matters of godliness and leaves the matters of life one day you will stand and watch you will be a mighty man of god with a big parish and your wife and you will watch your children with pity a letter come and stand before you we've been expelled not because we smoked not because we drank because the means to make it happen was not there you will be in a church and the owner will come and lock the church while service is going on and drive you out as for me and my house everything that must be put in place in my life to allow me serve god i will put in place if you can make that commitment tonight we have achieved something so far it says the things that pertain unto life and godliness 
and those things the equipping comes through knowledge 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 there is no shortcut to greatness there is no shortcut to glory sacrifice has always been the non-negotiable condition the sacrifice of your commitment your life your resources your attention you may not have the best of of atmosphere and environment but there is a determination that superimposes those things for the sake of my generation i will present jesus are we blessed the things that pertain unto life and godliness there are some of us and it really grieves my heart as young as we are condition as we call it has taken away our focus from god there are some of us here early 20s yet you have to be sending something home god is calling you into ministry but the focus is not there the moment he's speaking here comes the bills here comes the whatever and you know that your poor aged mother who couldn't go to school our fathers many of them largely disobedient and proud people although they don't have any result you see that and they yoke all of that the average home right now has many relatives waiting for their elder brother to marry because he's the one who will continue the education for them if all you see is poverty you are not seeing well you must see an attack on a generation if all you see is sickness you are not seeing well you must see an attack look at the long-term effect of that a day will come our men will no longer go to church because they have to work all day on sunday to add to it it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow so by the time the father is not there to raise the child the devil positions somebody who is now employed who now teaches that child if, if, whether the father is a pastor or a bishop is not the issue look at the children of men of god this is a cry and a burden that is boiling in my heart we must redeem not only ourselves but redeem a generation we must start thinking transgenerationally don't say you are too young if the entire scope of your life is just me my marriage my home my this no you must start thinking you see that when koinonia started this young boy seated here was in the loins of prophecy today he's now hearing you will be surprised one day now this small boy you see will be going to secondary school one day you'll be writing jam and you will open your eyes and see that i made a mistake i cannot correct again many of us seated here the reason why our lives are delayed is because we have to pay the price that was made by our parents before we start building our own lives you've not even started building your own life yet you are paying a debt you know nothing about then when you are 50 and have paid then you now start your own life it's an attack listen to me very carefully it's an attack an attack on the integrity of god an attack on a generation that can seek god all these revelations that we dish out in the body of christ will soon become useless if we ignore these things because there will be nobody to hear them again all the dimensions of heavens and the stars and the constellations we would talk to ourselves as men of god on stage while everybody runs around everywhere trying to make a living make a living is a cause there are many of our parents is in their deathbed they will confess that i was called to be a prophet to my generation called to be a prophet they would have been at the dimension of Benihim today. Imagine how many destinies would have been changed if they answered the call. But they were hijacked. And they only see the visions in their parlor. God shows them global events and they are there. No grace and influence to effect it. You read about these generals. Some of them can hold one year of prayer. You know, sometimes men of god hold prayer meetings 
is it not those who have eaten that will come if i hold a prayer meeting five days in a week pastor alpha you're a lecturer except god grants you grace should you can't be effective you are only effective when you have options and that's what satan wants to make sure a whole generation does not have no option no option there is an attack on our generation we must open our eyes and see it this is not just the issue of money this is not the issue of influence this is the issue of the destiny of a generation the prophetic destiny the prophets labored in the bible and prophesied about our generation and they died not seeing this now we have come in the scene and many of us are just playing games with our lives doing the same old things that brought pain to us so that our own children will cry I want to serve the Lord not because I'm a preacher I want to serve the Lord because my life was meant to be a revelation of his glory I want to serve the Lord I want to be the one to coach my children not Sunday school son sit down let me teach you the Bible not police station teach my child how to live not a rehab center teach your child or daughter how to live is god speaking to us tonight i'm challenging you there is a serious burden in my heart if we do not arise for our generation let me tell you very soon you will be laboring on your child and the lawless children of another person who is not listening to what i'm saying will be there to become the strongholds we not only must care about our children we must care about our generation one child 90 percent of our children are influenced to be bad they are not bad on their own you are laboring to train them there is another godless man somewhere and they all meet in the same place and cain dominates abel and make our children feel sorry for being christians you look at many of us here you are looking at me now look how ashamed you are if you are in the social sphere now you are in church you are jumping but once you are there are you drinking no i don't drink are you this no, you and they look at you oh, what a child this guy his eyes have no and you feel so guilty for loving god and being attention and paying attention to him it's like the in thing now is rebellion you are a man to the degree to which you are stubborn lawless rebellious and proud that's what we are marketed to a generation that is the portrait of a superhero that our children are learning if you must be a superhero be rebellious be a bully be everything but a christian the average young child is not interested in church again again you invite them find out how many teenagers come for koinonia you'll be surprised there are young people there are old people but the teenagers don't come it's not because it's night they stroll around and then go around and do a lot of things and satan comes he wants to capture that generation but in the name of jesus christ there are people who will say no way there are people who will create a spiritual barricade that as the priest of my home no way satan there is no entrance huh that gentleman who was talking about aleko or whatever it is look at now that a time will come your child will be saying mommy we are from benway but what is that you say i settled it already don't worry it was well settled that that discussion just one day i will tell you about the story that once upon a time in our village people don't reach 30 but i stood as an altar and i settled it are we together and one of the deceptions let me begin to build my discussion tonight now one of the deceptions that i think god is granting me grace to connect tonight is what i call the danger of imbalance write it down the danger the catastrophic danger of imbalance 
it not only matters that we communicate truth it matters that the truth we communicate must be the whole counsel of god everybody say the whole counsel of god the whole counsel of god is a definition of all his intention everything he desires for a people within a time period to know about him represents the whole counsel of god for that dispensation and one of the things that you see satan playing out right now is an attempt to use religion as a tool that sponsors imbalance in our quest seeing then that he cannot stop us from having an appetite for god he now begins to sell imbalance to believers and let me tell you something brothers and sisters imbalance is as dangerous as falsehood imbalance is as dangerous as a lie let's examine a few things before i talk about imbalance i shared one time about three great errors that the lord revealed to me in the body of christ if you remember when we were talking about the body of christ let me do a quick recap that the lord began to reveal to me that there were three great errors in the body of christ the first error is found in first timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 first timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 he said the spirit speaketh expressly the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith we're examining the first error now giving heed to seducing spirits and then the doctrine of devils everyone say the doctrine of devils another word for this is apostasy apostasy a deviation from god's known pattern of operation apostasy the first error that the body of christ has to contend with is the error of apostasy listen to my message the apostate church apostasy a deviation from the truth and also a deviation from god's pattern two things there a deviation from the truth is called apostasy but a deviation from the pattern of communicating that truth is also apostasy even if the information is correct but the spiritual system of transferring it is wrong it is still apostasy are we together in god's dealings with men both the information and the pattern are important not just the information don't just say the most important thing is that i'm healed the most important thing is that i prosper the most important thing is that i get anointed no sir there is a predefined pattern when god looks at you and you are doing business with god what you got is not as important as how it came don't just say i was anointed don't just say i was prosperous don't just say i i got married don't just say i had a child god is obsessed with patterns that if you must host his glory then there must be a formation that must be according to pattern apostasy i teach that there are two dimensions to apostasy number one the communicator of the message himself not being of god that's the first dimension where they're, whether as a man of god as a businessman whoever attempting to communicate anything the plan from the beginning was deception intrinsically the communicator himself is of the devil there is such a possibility in the body of christ and in our environment not just apostate informations apostate people people who are not they were never never of god from the first place are we blessed and then number two the people the communicators of those truths may be genuine but the information they are communicating is a doctrine of demons you can be genuine sincere let me take ministry as a case study you can be a sincere man of god you love god you are not fake but the content of your communication is a doctrine that is not sponsored by the spirit of christ the bible says that some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and then doctrines of 
demons i can be a genuine man of god genuinely anointed by god but because of a system the bible calls seduction are we together now i can deviate from god's way of doing things and now become a communicator i am not fake but my message is not genuine both of these cases can be classified as apostasy so that's the first error the second error that i teach is the error of individualism also the error of indifference write it down indifference what we call i don't care attitude right individualism we don't think kingdom we don't think generational we think me so if a jimmy's leg is having a problem provided it has not affected me it's none of my business this is where many many men of god many many of we pastors pentecostals especially have missed it we have missed it big time in this area we are so individual individualistic we don't care about what is happening to the body provided my church provided my life is immune for it, from it to hell with the body are we together yeah so if the danger has not come to meet me it doesn't matter if an armed robber comes to steal in a pastor's church nearby it was not my church it was not my member my kingdom financier was not robbed so pastor may god bless you if someone dies provided he's not a member of my church it's amazing how we leaders mentor people to deliberately select being in the body is not enough you must be associated with me to be able to enjoy certain benevolence that is meant for the body it's a poisonous spirit the error of indifference the error of individualism when god begins to build his army his system of operation is that he takes us beyond individualism and connects us as an organism if your leg is having pains your head can pain you because of the leg is that true um we're returning back from kano and we stopped at a filling station to get fuel and one guy was marketing a funny product you know these guys that market something at the filling station and he said um there's a the drug or the lotion whatever it is is for teeth <laughs> but you rub it on your leg yes he said you don't have to rub the thing on your teeth you just rub it on your leg now that, that's a body consciousness at least i didn't buy it but he taught me that the leg is related to the teeth because we have been taught to apply drugs only where it hurts and leave other parts and he said no no let me show you another formula you can apply it in the leg but it can touch the teeth that means i can pray from zaria and God can preserve Kenneth Copeland because it is the body I can hear that there is an attack on a man of God and not say after all they don't listen say no no Lord this whatever it is he's part of the body his integrity is our integrity as the body and Lord arise in your mercy for your namesake but we keep becoming individualistic you ask believers what is your pride our pride let me tell you the pride of our generation three things one revelation rema the extent to which you bring an exegesis of the truth and nothing is wrong with that right greek words hebrew words play around with all kinds of concordances and then dish out mysteries we love that two prophecy if I give you a prophetic word which is not bad three anointing and our definition of anointing is fall down not result fall down just make sure you hit that bench as a testament that the communicator is having something and so this erroneously become the pivot of our pursuit we're looking for revelation we're looking for an ability to communicate which is is is, is to be desired and then we're looking for an anointing to make sure when we step into a meeting people just fall up and down and when these things happen we believe that we are fine and we don't extend the scope of our alliance to god 
to extend beyond our personal comforts to think body in terms of administration you know i love koinonia thank god this is where he's planted me but in terms of the health of the church i am passionately concerned about the body of christ just follow me we are going somewhere tonight are we blessed the third error that i teach um, i have taught this already so is what i call exaggerated confrontation of error this is where it even gets sad exaggerated confrontation of error that means that error that is attempted to be corrected but not from a standpoint of love error that is attempting to be corrected from a standpoint of intrinsic intimidation by the supposed corrector now listen very careful you see please come Jimmy. can i use you Amen. when you see a Jimmy in one word you think wealth finances right well anointing too anointing at least last week you saw it praise god now watch this chances are that if god has called a Jimmy to represent um that dimension of maybe the holy spirit and finances to people and i have a bias with finances either as a result of men, my mentality or my frustrations two of them can cause the same thing i can have a poor mentality or i can be secretly frustrated now if there is an imbalance in a Jimmy's life or his way of communicating that chances are that because i was angry since even before the imbalance came now that i have found a scapegoat of a lapse in him i will correct it in a way you know it was paining me this is not the point is not to correct the point is to vent out pain there is a big this exaggerated confrontation is even more deadly than error itself i once had a well somewhere a man of god was talking about those he was saying they teach people how to pray in tongues somewhere you know trying to be sarcastic that man himself does not pray in tongues he doesn't believe it but there is no there's no legitimate case for him to fight it so he now routes through a church or a man of god that he sees teaching people he now uses that one exception this is how you know error is exaggerated a man of god or a businessman or whatever picks one single error and robs it off beyond the proportion of his relevance you know that the, the goal is not to sponsor correction the goal is to help manage intimidation are we together now so Ejimi talks about money and all of that and all of a sudden i'm there in my frustration and i turn and i say be careful all these guys that just talk about money all the time the truth of the matter is that i may be right in speaking about that unique situation but it's not coming from a standpoint that wants to contribute to the health of the body i am only communicating because i am intrinsically frustrated thank you sir are we blessed some of us here seated looking at me have become victims even of this it tells on how we hate anointed people it tells on how we hate wealthy people are we together now yes and so we try everybody right now is in the ministry of correction that is the latest anointing that is going all around everybody is correcting everybody everybody once you have access to a mic and you can talk and people can hear you everybody is correcting everybody let me tell you this the greatest danger in the church now is not error the greatest danger is imbalance and this imbalance has come from this third point this is where i want to build my case tonight so pay attention so that you find out whether you are part of it and trust god to help you tonight everybody shout imbalance, imbalance. there is something about the limitation of pentecostals that our orthodox brothers and sisters capitalize on and use it as the basis why you should not be open to the things of the holy spirit then there are things that the pentecostals use as their excuse for thinking an orthodox lifestyle is too mean and basic and all of that and all of them may have some sense of justification but the truth is that there is an inner anger for one another 
just waiting for a legitimate excuse are we together now yeah whether it is an issue of marriage or finances or fidelity or issues that have to do with um, administration and leadership whatever it is how you know that correction is not coming from a sincere point is the exaggeration exaggeration i always say you use a, a hammer to kill a fly a simple tap on that fly it would die but when you use hammer you were angry it's not about the fly the fly just happens to be what the hammer is hitting obviously that hammer was not designed for the fly it's just that the fly got in the way of the hammer and boy will that hammer hit the fly there is a spirit of pride listen carefully it looks like it's coming from god but i'm exposing lucifer there is something satan is doing in the especially among we men of god that god has privileged to have access to revelation and anointing and a dimension of the miraculous pride is gradually eating us up because we believe that because of the little results we have we have authority by ourselves to correct everybody and everything every man of god is trying to show what another man is doing wrong everyone is trying to show that this is wrong why are you praying like this the other one will say you too why are you keeping quiet when you are praying the other one say what is the meaning of warfare the other one say keep waiting demons are coming see let me tell you this let me tell you this listen very carefully listen carefully if we do not trust god to rise up and correct these imbalances we are going to authorize satan to destroy us god's goal is not to produce koinonia in all the earth if god gives me an assignment and says apostle through you the gospel will get to the ends of the earth he was talking to all the people who will come out spiritually and prophetically through my loins through there are ministries that will come out of me they are an extension of that instruction the idea is not to turn every believer in nigeria into koinonia it's a failed project from day one and anybody who knows god will never be part of that failed agenda so god is not glorified when koinonia has more members god is glorified when the kingdom advances listen very carefully because right now the entire scope of our soul winning agenda is sometimes is even sheep stealing i say this because i love the body you are sitting quietly taking fresh air someone comes to preach to you you say okay i'm already born again as soon as he's leaving you another person is coming say your brother just say it doesn't matter you just listen have you have you been given um, um are you are you aware of our church services you say yes he say come and the next time you see him look how people feel guilty and blackmailed because i invited you for koinonia you didn't come and you make it look like you are the worst sinner in the whole world you are just because you did not come that's not salvation that's pressure like banks give people target bring this by this month we have begun to propose some of those campaigns and we must be careful kingdom advancement is not the advancement of a name of a church is the advancement of the agenda of god in the hearts of men and across the spheres now it 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 is important that the individual ministries do their best to be the the platforms for people to be saved and equipped but that's not the idea there are people it's one of the reasons why pastors never invite people to their pulpit because someone comes and in two minutes before he preaches he has said almost 90 things about his church and sometimes some can even be sarcastic to downplay the church that now invited them you hear about people who go for conferences and before you know it while in that conference he saw a keyboard is playing well he saw a worshiper singing well and the man of god will collect their numbers travel back and now call them and begin to indoctrinate them you are, are you you sound too good your pastor doesn't deserve you come and join a moving train we say and then the member now leaves his church to join the supposed moving train and then we make it look like god is only with us it is pride let me repeat the idea that makes you believe you are the only representation of god in a territory is pride the day koinonia believes that we are the only and even the ultimate representation of god in this region is a sign that error has already eaten beginning from me to everyone may god forbid it are we together now 
Yes. This is the basis behind the show of superiority from men of God to churches to business people. Imbalance. Imbalance. The, the inability to construct the truth of God's word so that it becomes edifying to you and to the body. Now, let me teach you something. The dealings of God has a side effect. Watch this. I've shared it here. That if God calls me into the healing ministry, watch this. Because of the character and the nature of my training, are we together? It will require a level of meticulousness in a dimension. Chances are that because of my concentration, I will trivialize other matters of the kingdom too. They are important, but because they were not captured in my training process, I will assume that they are not important. Are we together now? So when I now come up, this is the healing evangelist, evangelist Joshua Selman, and I'm healing. And when I see somebody in another dimension, is the reason why we reject certain ministries in the body because we have not been trained. You see young people come and dance, and while they are dancing, someone is just waving his head and say, "What a wasted generation!" Simply because the way God trained you that was not captured as part of the experience of the training so you can downplay it then to mean that these are not serious things when people come to church they sleep and snore every other time until the man of god comes in now the uh, god has been moving since praise and worship you were not taught to respect it a time of worship people are rolling on the floor god is speaking to people someone has received his breakthrough already but you were trained that until someone stands on stage so if the man of god now comes and starts rolling you say what kind of church is this you don't preach here i want you to listen to me very carefully why am i teaching you this because god is helping us to be a blessing to many others are we together imbalance there are many people in the body of christ whose ministries have been strangled no room to find expression simply because the man of god who founded the church the experience of allowing those ministries to find expression were not captured in his dealings with god and so because of that the moment you see any other ministry that is outside your scope of understanding you fight it you abuse it you can call it of the devil you blackmail it amazing do you know why god limits you like this so that it is in partnership with other dimensions in the body you see how complete the body is you see that so if god has granted me grace to walk in a dimension of the teaching ministry and i don't walk say in miracles and sam come sam sam walks in the miraculous it is my identifying with sam it now supplies a dimension of god that i wouldn't have seen are we together now for sam the way god dealt with him it was just vision and power so when sam comes to the stage he said look stop all this grammar of bible study let's go straight to wheelchairs he is also in error he does not know it's just that his own nature of ministry is what is desired by the masses they want power immediately so chances are that you will see that in sam's church you receive miracles but there's no spiritual growth because the system he just the it was the god almighty god that was the revelation that was given to him for you the rabbi of rabbis that's what you got so you can sit down and teach one series for one year and then i reject you i say sam all it takes is mental transformation not power people need to be leaders and then sam is saying continue there you are watching your members crying what they need is power both of them god is with them but they believe god is not with each other you see that mistake me please can i use you again please come and then all of a sudden this guy comes he's a leader he's an entrepreneur he's a businessman and i said look all these your business principles i laid hands on somebody a millionaire's child without knowing any finance thing and all of a sudden they gave me an estate all these things you are trying to teach people is nonsense teach them power and estate comes 
and the members ignore this principle and they find out that Estee didn't come after 10 years the man is married now the preacher got an estate but the hearer didn't get it are we together now all three of them now chances are that a Jimmy may be angry and say look at this guy power 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 let's see whether you ever rise to the government this is the fight now everybody let me tell you what Satan does when Satan wants to destroy you if he knows there's nothing he can do about your anointing he covers you from seeing the body so the only thing you see is your church and your performance and based on that he will now use supposed loyal sons to keep you in that state the power when you came into that meeting you know i like you you don't talk anything no verse bible was not open straight to power and he say you mean it you were impressed say yes now this is a group here hiding themselves and shortchanging themselves in imbalance yet they will believe that because the man sees visions he has the entire scope of what god is doing and then he will have the effrontery to now indoctrinate his members into believing that anytime you see our teacher man or anytime you see our businessman ignore them just get power and rest and that's what is happening so we have a congregation of people today who have no regard for the word of god turn to philippians you see them just snoring once you hear so ah, 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 you see, that's right this is i mean we are, we are in church now that's all people want and while that shout is going on the business guy says when you finish go and pay your rent shout roll on the floor your rent is the, the tribute collectors are there and you can't say he's not godly because he's rich and he's with part of the money your church was built so the pastor can't shout at him you know what it will mean to you look at the confusion now let me tell you no one of these three will admit they are incomplete it is one of the hardest things for men of god to do to admit that regardless of what they have seen they need to spread their horizon beyond the scope that was revealed to them to see the body it is in the seven lampstands that the fullness of christ was seen the seven lampstands i had a voice when i turned i didn't see christ i saw the complete church with all the dimensions when i saw the complete church i saw the fullness of christ if i had seen two of them i would see only his hands and think god is a hand then i see another church and see his eyes and think all to god is prophecy then i see another church and i see his legs and i think all in life is progress but the complete church revealed the complete christ is god speaking to us this is a revelation that will bless you beyond imagination and so Ejimi now organizes a seminar to correct people and gathers all his members and say look all those power guys don't mind them all those revelation guys the bible says money answer it that's the members answering him now all things whereas there's somebody dying in the hospital with cancer a millionaire that money cannot do anything about are we together now answer it all things and if any of his member dare ask him and say sir why don't the power of god work in you say are you stupid am i not rich is that not power you see that person becomes a disloyal person imagine how many of us are called disloyal for asking questions pastor we don't pray in tongues in this church but is it all right don't ever ask me i am this i am that don't go and join all those riffraff roadside prophets man of god is it okay if i meet a man of god to hear the counsel of god no the word is everything just focus on the word don't let any roadside prophet come and deceive you whereas that man is in utter confusion and five minutes of this ministry can correct 10 years in his life many members would have moved forward if only they went to where the eyes of god is but they refuse because the pastor has the hand of god and they keep seeing the hand of god the hand does not see it only holds what the eyes see listen to me because many of us are starting ministry now some of us are in ministry some of us are leaders and already 
we are, if we are not careful we are, get, we are getting into big error we've been mentored by all kinds of people that's why I see as a man of God if God gives you any influence over people go and pray and say Lord let me not raise a people that will be defiant from your patterns I say it with all humility not to blow the trumpet of this ministry but by his grace koinonia has been part and parcel of the building and the lifting of many ministries as a person we have account numbers of many ministries that i'm not even connected to they are not my friends we could just hear that there is a program somewhere and say look we have to do something the other day i think dunamis came and they were opening their branch here our protocol department all of them they said no let's go and serve i said quickly make sure that anything that is needed let it be given my koinonia I am apostle. I'm the owner of Zaria. God gave it to me. It's my property. No. This is why men of God don't sleep. This is why men of God yoke members with covenant. Swear that you will stay. Why will I swear? Why? You change clothes? Why, why shouldn't I? I mean, I, I should swear that what? No. Or we now make it prophetic. God told me the day you leave me or the day you do this there is a cause where this is a lie there is no cause coming anywhere anywhere just because someone is falling down when we are saying it does not mean it's a lie there is no cause anywhere even God you can choose to leave him I said before you life and death why will somebody come and threaten you let me tell you the truth I love the body but it's a lie it's our insecurity it's not the Holy Spirit don't blame the, the Holy Spirit has no part in this people stay when they are changed people don't just become loyal to a leader foolishly don't you know that in the kingdom you keep things by leaving them hmm. whosoever keeps his life shall lose it whosoever keeps his members shall whosoever tries to keep money shall but whosoever loses it for my sake are you learning something thank you sir thank you. exaggeration now let me teach you something it is true that there are erroneous things in the body but hear me correcting the body of Christ is a ministry you have to be called into it the same way God calls someone to be a prophet you are called is part of the apostolic and prophetic system of governance and it's not just every apostle and every prophet that is a corrector even among apostles and prophets there are rankings and dimensions not just because you're an apostle or prophet or pastor or teacher I am pastor so 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 I read in Harvard I am no no sir we are misleading people there are spiritual conditions for you to have the authorization to be shown the weakness of the body let me tell you this you can observe what you think is the weakness of the body but God can show you what is the weakness of the body there is a condition to end that level of intimacy from God where God can show you this is where my body is weak correct it hey Jimmy if your son or your wife feels down do you just walk to anybody on the street and say my wife my son has a little rashes here or my son has knife caught him here and you open your son's cloth do you do that you go to an authorized place called a hospital and even in that hospital you enter a room and if need be in that room you can pull up and you are comfortable because it is the authorized place where that matter is addressed if you pull your son's cloth on the road somebody will look at you and say man of god what is going on but if you pull your son's cloth there it is the place not every place is a place of correction let me tell you this there is a condition you must sustain as a man of God to be afforded the opportunity to contribute in correcting the body and that element is not prayer that element is not fasting that element is not even revelation that element is genuine love for the body not for God for the body you will never be given access to correct the body until you love that body you can't correct the body from the standpoint of hatred 
you can't correct the body from the standpoint of resentment you can't correct the body from the standpoint of error it's impossible if i hate keyboards and this guy is making a mistake i don't have the right to correct him because my correction will meet with a bias that has been there let me tell you this i travel a lot and you can ask those who travel with me i go to all kinds of churches and they do all kinds of things sometimes i am surprised when i see what people do in many churches my mind i say if i catch my child doing that kind of thing we will talk oh, we will talk seriously yet i am able to have the accommodation let me give you a secret if you look at christ in every church you will find him mm. let me repeat they went to a tomb where there was no life and found jesus there a tomb where there is no life yet when the woman kept looking she saw jesus in that tomb is it in your bible the living have nothing to do in the grave but a woman was determined to see jesus and although her location was the grave she still saw him so that dead church that you think your pastor is as dead as whatever the day your heart is humble and you know that the builder is not a man of god but the spirit of god one day in the confusion of your pastor he will say something that is the secret for your lifting now we who god has helped with little revelation little grace here this is what we do when we go to church we hold our bibles arrogantly and sit at the back we don't sit in front because the man doesn't have anything to say and then he comes as usual turn to the book of this and that and god so loved the world are you aware of this and someone is just nodding and say oh god i i would have listened to a message that would bless me what is this guy doing and wasting my time and you think what you are demonstrating is superiority because of spiritual level it's a sign you have fallen for the deception yourself because the higher you rise in the kingdom the more you know we are products of his mercy so while you stand there and watch the man of god ramble and make mistakes and quote wrong scriptures in the midst of it you what if you really look at jesus the holy spirit will start speaking to you and say truly there is this treasure in earthen vessels you say this man may not be so accurate yet he has been pastoring for 15 years and the members didn't leave him while you who has revelation is struggling to have 10 members and the god starts revealing to you you are now seeing jesus in that weak man that there is a grace upon this man one day in the midst of his confusion he would tell you t.l osborne came to lagos and he was part of those who were helping to hold his bag and t.l osborne touched his head you said that's where he got it pastor i know you don't preach well but i just found out you are carrying something i need touch me and the man said no are you who preach very well i was impressed he said pastor you were impressed with my revelation but what I need now is what you carry. There is no man of God that comes to my life that I cannot receive anything from. No. That's why I see some of our fathers. I don't sit down and say, oh, revelation, revelation. There are places I travel to minister. I already know that they may not have that level of word content. But when it's time to pray, I'm humble. Please, reveal it to me. Many of us are about to lose it because if it is not a company of people who have your level of spiritual enlightenment, they don't matter to you. You will miss something because the greatest treasures you need will be hidden in that reverend that cannot speak English. That reverend that is it. One day God will tell you, go for the Capro missions program. I say, Lord, me, me that I'm looking to be Yongicho. What is Capro? How many will forest to go and win with soul? When I can snap my finger, I've learned the law of exemption. And God says, break your pride and follow them to that village. You follow them to that village and you sit down and see a Hausa reverend who has not been sick once for 22 years. God will say, this is why I brought you. Kneel down. Let him release something upon you. Before you carry your pride and be lying that you have not taken drugs for 30 years and die two weeks later on. Kneel down. Let that man give you something genuine. Let me tell you this one of the secrets of my spiritual growth is my open-heartedness towards the body not necessarily my perfection in pursuing god my open-heartedness that does not mean you jump at error no no when i discern grace 
I realize there is something. This woman never built a house, but she never went hungry. She would tell you every pastor that rose up came and stayed in her house. There is something you should receive there. We are about losing. That's why many of us, do you know, let me tell you one of the things with error. Once you stay in a dimension and don't open up to the body, your area of strength will magnify and your area of lapse will become clear. It will be clear that only your hands are growing, but your head is remaining small. It will be clear that you are growing in prosperity, but your knowledge of God is diminishing. It will be clear that you are growing in the miraculous, but you don't have a heart for God. By the grace of God, I want to raise the balanced people that they can look at your life and see that the matters of life, when they come to passion for God, you are there. Prayer, you are there. Not because I have all, but I know how to bring all. I travel somewhere and I see a man of God. Ah, apostle, you are the great man and your messages. While he's saying that, I'm observing. Lord, what do I see? This man has more character than me. I may pray more than him, but if we stand here and somebody is about to kill us, I would deny Christ and run, but this guy will stay and die. That means there is a grace for courage that I need. Our pastor is coming from Adamawa State. I had the privilege, they invited me. I've been there three times now, sir. Yes, three times. And when Boko Haram struck, 2014, sir, am I right? And destroyed those people in Mubi. It was that meeting that was like, um, it was a starting point for the churches again. While I preached and saw the way they honored me, I asked myself a question. I said, with all this mouth I make, if I was part of the pastors that stood before Boko Haram, will I denounce Christ? Don't be too fast, say me. Uh -uh. Now there are protocol people protecting you. But there, a pastor can go out in the morning and say, wife, if you don't see me, just know that I died for Christ. That means there is a grace you say the man is not praying in tongues but you who is praying in tongues you run away at a sound on your zinc this guy is standing and watching a gun do you think it is normal no by faith abel offered it takes something to offer yourself now a wise man will meet that man of god and say sir you may not have the grace to preach and heal like me but i see that there is a dimension revealed to you if i stay where i am i will raise sons that can pray but never stand for christ i need that grace i admit i don't have it i admit that dimension has been opened up to you i humble myself sir it does not make you small this is what we will never do as men of god our pride will never allow us we will hide and listen to tapes in the secret. Hi. And some of you are already learning those kinds of things. You never see yourselves and celebrate yourself. That guy is Pastor Femi. Pastor Femi of where? Rema. Which, which Rema? Ah, please, I came into this town. I'm, I'm a man of God already. Who is this pastor? The, of where? Under who? No. If you don't change from this, a generation will show that there was a lapse of God that we did not tap into. Don't ever let anybody say the prophetic is not useful just because you found the word of God. Don't call every prophet a reef raff and a roadside prophet. There is a dimension only prophecy can birth. No amount of study can bring you there. There is a dimension only mental transformation can bring. So don't insult Mensa Otterbill and say, oh, these guys are just... Uh -uh. There is a dimension only Joyce Mayer can bring. There is a dimension only Benny Hinn can bring. There is a dimension only Dr. Lukoya can bring. There is a dimension only Papa Kumui can bring. You ignore Dr. Lukoya and demons kill you in your pride. You die the death of a fool before your time. A man who was the best in molecular genetics and left it. Left something, went to school abroad. Exceptional in molecular genetics. And came and humbled himself to carry the cross. And all of a sudden you see him. And just say, what is all these things? 
we even mimic them in laughter and the demons say thank god for such a foolish generation are we together then you see a man of god papa Ia deboe can just stand i'm mentioning names because i'm saying positive things about them and because their fathers indeed may god bless you you're like i i need And you listen to td jakes and while he's moving keyboards are playing and moving and you just came out of seven days dry retreat like a skeleton almost dying i said what is this guy saying is it just to say you will come out that you can't say in one minute and while you are there in your pride slaves left africa and went to us god picks a man out of them and makes one of the best preachers you didn't ask how it happened when they traced his origin they found out he's Igbo, a nigerian are you learning who have you resented because of imbalance some of us right now we love god but we have been we have educated ourselves into believing that some people in the body are not relevant for our growth i'm telling you you are already in imbalance especially if you're a man of god if you are hearing me and you're in this mistake change now change quickly never go back home and put men of god and keep bringing them one by one. Oh, this one doesn't have fire this one he doesn't have this ah this one i like his suit i like this one i like his this be careful there is one lord there is one faith there is one baptism there is something that joshua selman will never see even if i fast for 400 days it will not be covered by a demon it will be covered by god himself so that i will need a jimmy to see it there is something a jimmy will never see until he looks at a pastor toby or a pastor here in adamawa there was something about god i learned when i went to adamawa sir i, I say it I have never seen a level of generosity from people like that women some of them old enough to be my mother and you see i'll say it till today when i go to movie they see me they start jumping daddy oh yo yo people with doctors lecturers with such depth of humility i don't know if i can do that for anybody and while they do those things i don't sit down with my pride and say wow you mean they acknowledge me this far i sit down and say lord let this grace for humility that will be upon a man of 50 years before i now die in the next 10 years because of pride do you see that god has put the remedy for our fall in the body but because we could not tap into it imbalance is a destroyer there are many families today that have no business being in poverty if they would listen to those carrying the graces it's amazing that what we resent is what we secretly desire oh i prophesy your name is divine ah man of god and someone all oh, these riffraffs divine whereas one day he tried to he said what's your name are you gabriel he said no i'm a jimmy and he said, ah. he said no he he wanted it secretly he was just too hot and then he said no what is not all about prophesying you must be careful most of the things people criticize they test it secretly when it becomes too hot they live as if nothing happened then they create a theology ah, ah, how can one person be praying for 12 hours life is not all about prayer that man has tried to pray secretly he, he thought it's just by energy the grace is not there so he sees someone fasting dry two weeks there's a man i know in abuja i don't know anybody that fasts on earth like him one day maybe when we are doing something in koinonia and he honors me a lot i'm sure i'll bring him one day to pray that man can go for um, no food no water not that you drink water in the night dry ah! if that man prays even standing close to him you will feel as if they are electrocuting you i literally mean it there is no deliverance case that gets to that man that goes back free. Papa. 
before i know i'm serious i really am serious that guy has stretched this body and brought it under subjection the kind of power that is in that man's voice yet he will come to me like this and still kneel down sometimes i'm tempted to say stand up oh. you better stand up and lay hands on me how you know you love the body is your outspoken celebration of the uniqueness in it the moment you are ashamed to celebrate the uniqueness in the body is a sign that something about it is intimidating you oh a beautiful song look how wonderful this guy's voice was when he was singing i was just listening to his speech i said who dash monkey banana let me try that thing i was in a Okuta. my voice ceased just because it was raining yes someone shouting Are we together now don't forget for those of you who know a little about me i was once a music director i'm not naive musically but now i carry my pride and try what he's doing and that's the end of it there's no coin on here for one month so i can choose to respond to my frustration by trivializing him and say it's not all about pitch the most important is the message no sir we need the pitch too otherwise recite a poem don't sing <laughs> it's not all about prosperity okay carry everything in your house and give to the poor the blogger who is talking is using an ipad that he bought two hundred and fifty thousand, and say it's not all about prosperity are we together it's not all about money and there is a hot meal in your kitchen waiting for you and there are poor people there it's not all about prayer yet you have intercessors in your church praying for you so you know prayer is important it's not all about fasting yet people are fasting for you it's not all about prophecy yet you call and say uh, promise just find out whether god is saying something around this i'm agreeing with you it's just that I, i'm not i had something i just want to i won't tell you because i is pride just say help me sir i'm trusting to hear something i'm a man of god too but there's there's this the vision is hazy i'm not seeing very well what is there does it mean you are not born again a hazy vision is something that happens to everybody jesus touched people many times are we together you must reject imbalance the imbalance that comes in approaching the body the imbalance in camping around a dimension as revealed to you and ignoring the usefulness of what God has distributed in the body you must sustain a fortitude tonight to embrace there is something I've learned from our children that no adult can teach me no matter how simple and well behaved you are these children have taught something they have taught me faith they have taught me courage some of do you know some of these little children are in prayer department am i right prayer department they don't miss it so if a child can be in a prayer department what excuse does an adult have pray you tell them i'll buy you sweets they won't forget they come back and say uncle my sweet they never ask whether you have the money because they expect you to be adult enough to check whether you have money first before speaking now you learn that thing and when god says i know the thoughts i think towards you like a child you don't start asking lord where will the uncle come from no. you stop learning when pride close your eyes may humility open it tonight so that you can see what is going on you see that's why many of us don't know what god is doing in the body we only knew what he was doing with us in our little corners and we get up and say revival is coming when it has started since because you were not there the virgins had oil but they could not go to the market there were others who had in abundance but the foolish virgins did not get more a time came their own finished they had their own oil but they would have gone to get some more the same way joshua selman has anointing but i need to get some more from benny Hinn. i need to get some more from kenneth copeland i need to get some more because the challenges in the future at this my level of anointing will eat me as if i'm not anointed so i will not allow the pride because of the level god has brought me now believe 
that I can stand Benny Hinn's kind of challenge. So I need the grace. So I will listen. When pastors come to me for counseling, there's nothing that humbles me more than that. And some of those people are anointed people. Dr. Luca and Dr. John sent me a text and they said, Apostle, we are coming over. And I said, oh dear, I love you. When I was told, I was told that since around 4 a.m. or so, this is the assistant chaplain. He's also a man of God himself. But he came here since around 4 to sit down. What is there about a man? The veil has been torn and it tears and you, you don't enter. The veil has been torn, you are still poor. The veil has been torn, you are still this. Whereas you can humble yourself and say, every house is built by some man, but God is the builder of it all. There are people who must assist you in life otherwise you will never rise it's not pride one of the things that god helps me to do at the beginning of the year i go and our daddy escorts me to go and meet the pastors of cgc i go and greet them and get down on my knees with just a little i honor them and i get down on my knees and the pastor and his wife they speak and prophesy over me and lay hands over me i won't come and say see crowd no there is a grace if i were their age i don't know if i would submit to a small boy like this so lord help me before this pride that comes with middle belt and kill me where we don't have anything yet we make a lot of noise lord deliver me from it so that I can look at one of these our little ones tomorrow and say apostle I saw myself laying hands on you and I said do it the girl is shaking I said I said do it and she lays hands and from that day you enter a dimension of revelation you can sit and say God forbid transfer it to another adult let me receive it from the adult and God says you will never get it that way are you blessed imbalance is dangerous is why we have not seen i remember years ago i tried to pray for a woman i think somewhere in abuja also i can't remember i prayed for that woman i have never felt helpless before a sick body like that day you know how you pray and you know that there's no hope of that prayer being answered under that condition i couldn't feel any anointing the woman just stood there it saddened me I encourage this woman koinonia no koinonia had not even started it was just about to start i said lord how can a man be this helpless i came in your name bragged in your name if you see the scriptures i was quoting quoted this 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 the kingdom of god is not in word but in power and all that there was no power yet the bible say in my name i did it it didn't work that meant i need to submit to somebody who has the eyes of the spirit to tell me what the bible was saying because it's clear I did not get what Jesus was saying. Are we together? And yet I watched Benny Hinn climb up the stage before he raised one worship song. 40 wheelchairs. 40. Brothers and sisters, this thing is not magic. If you don't have it, find it. Because it is there. If it is not in your life, it is not missing. It only requires the humility to search. You desire the prophetic and it's not in your life. It is available. It will take your humility to search. Man of God, I have prayed. But I know God has directed me. But I do not know whether or not God is calling me to Kogi or Lafia. And the moment you are talking, the Lord just tells the person Lafia. And he says, the Lord is sending you to laugh here. In one minute, the word of the Lord came because of your humility to align. Instead of fasting for 100 days and you hear laugh here, just when you round up the fast, you hear a choir bomb. And as soon as you round up the fast, you hear just. You see that? Whatever is a limitation to you, we are going to pray. Please listen carefully whatever is a limitation to you the word limitation is relative everything you need is already resident within the body if your life is poor god did not make it so 
you ignore the grace that conveys that possibility if your prayer life is dead it is not god's will you have ignored the envoys that he has put that supply of the spirit upon if you do not have access to the deep things of god it is because pride has made you to take away the relevance the necessity of the word of god i look at people and with all humility i know they have stopped growing they've not backslidden but they put a peg around their lives simply because they cannot open their door and say oh god bring in other dimensions that are not here stood there and you know that's not their best that's not their greatest hallelujah praise the lord tonight is my prayer that god will deliver us from the error of imbalance that we will escape the danger of imbalance 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 that we will not trivialize the dimension of God that is required for our lives. All dimensions cannot be in your life, but all dimensions can work for you. Listen carefully. All dimensions cannot be in your life. It's impossible. But all dimensions available can work for you. Meaning that it's impossible for me to be as prophetic as ever as apostolic as ever as evangelical as ever no there is the limitation that god puts i can't be benny Hinn and kenneth copeland and joyce mayer and td jakes and bishop oyedeko and papa Ia deboe at the same time with the same degree no sir i have to be one of them but i can enjoy what is on bishop oyedeko papa adeboe benny Hinn. i can enjoy it through the humility of participations the word koinonia sharing together the ability to extend your hand through humility to say sir i have seen the dimension of god's grace in your life and i'm open to let it work in my life and honor becomes the key to that access and all of a sudden you find out that what was a mountain to you is trivialized under a certain kind of grace People have prayed for me in my life. I have been a product of many people's prayers. I have been surprised at how powerful the body of Christ is. I have prayed for people. And sometimes I look at what they call a mountain and I am shocked because I know how easy that problem can be solved. And in my mind, sometimes I wonder, where, where were you? Why did you allow it to get this bad? before locating the body for help are we together there is something tonight that you need in god for you to move to the next level that is not yet in your life but it is available and for many of us the error of imbalance has made you to think that because your life cannot produce it it cannot be produced so you just say if it was for me god would have brought it directly through me and just because it didn't come directly through me then it's not important please hear me prosperity is as important as healing healing is as important as prayer prayer is as important as visions are we together salvation is as important as mental transformation mental transformation is as important as your health and hygiene stay in your area of calling but do not allow imbalance make you trivialize what god is doing god is not only working in koinonia brothers and sisters god is working across zaria god is working across the north god is working across africa it is only a privilege for us to be at the level that we are now in his program it's a privilege for us to be contributors that's the word contributors that you can come and listen to the supply of the dimension that god has put in me of course administratively speaking it it is important for you to be able to stay in your area of whatever ministry or whatever church you are part of for the purpose of administration and leadership however let me tell you the truth any man that indoctrinates you into camping around him alone and all the dimension revealed to him whether in the name of mentorship or fatherhood 
has deceived you if i am your spiritual father it means you have taken you have come under my authority but it does not mean that i represent all of christ to you i represent the voice and the speakings of god in your life but i must have the flexibility to allow you grow and this is my goal god knows i get materials that have nothing to do with me i send it to people in the ministry listen listen to it this will bless you it blessed me so much are we blessed we are going to pray father my my father would have prospered if only he listened to that prosperity preacher he said prosperity preachers are rubbish now my father is an evangelist who has lost his house although a preacher of the gospel lord my arrogant business partner father would have been such a man of prayer and he would have seen that accident before it happened but he ignored it because he thought everything was money and he neglected the place of prayer and evil came sat in our house and there was no eyes to see and nobody to manipulate things from the realm of the spirit and we died that death was not caused by god the refusal to tap from what god is doing closed your eyes until there was destruction there's nobody to help me in school no if only you listen to the person that god used to say go to this church you would have found somebody who would have sponsored you it is your refusal because you never believe that there are people kind enough to sponsor you without strings attached and your imbalance did not allow you to tap into that dimension tonight i want us to start with a prayer of repentance lord forgive me for trivializing your other dimensions scattered across the body thank you for what you have shown me as a man of god lord forgive me for insulting business people forgive me for calling prosperous people wasters of your time lord i forgive me for calling prayer warriors hungry noisemakers forgive me for insulting deliverance forgive me for insulting the prophetic i ask for mercy for insulting people who transform the mind in the place of prayer forgive me for thinking those who are the the personal development experts are useless to your agenda forgive my ignorance that has come through imbalance this imbalance has cheated me and my life has lost the flavor that should be go ahead and pray the reason why i am not blessed in all things is because imbalance has pegged a dimension of god from my life if i opened up myself to the healing ministry i would have carried that healing anointing my church would have been a church that experienced his healing i rejected the prophetic and now confusion is destroying my life lord i ask for mercy i've exaggerated the prophetic and I've left the word of God. Now I've gotten into witchcraft and error. I've become a slave to prophets. Have mercy on me. And let me return back to the word. I've been so obsessed with power. And signs and wonders. That there is no place for spiritual growth. Being grounded and established in the word of God. All I look for now is power. Lord have mercy. Take away that imbalance from my life outside make sure you are praying everywhere pray the error the danger the destructive calamity that imbalance brings lord have ignored the anointing and all i do is just an empty theological bible study without the power without grace so my church my business my family has no genuine anointing Lord, I open up myself to the dimension of authentic power. Lord, I rejected excellence. I thought it was just about prayer and Bible study and healing the sick. I rejected excellence. Now all my TV programs are not accepted because they don't match a level of excellence. I have wasted resources because of lack of excellence. 
there are certain partners and helpers that excellence would have drawn to my ministry but lack of excellence threw, threw them away I received that dimension pray hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray there is not maybe not in koinonia but I observe the body of Christ and I see a widespread of prayerlessness people don't pray again pray for me that's the language of people oh you are going for please pray for us so oh. and people don't pray you know why because in a bit to balance this we have insulted every prayer warrior insulted anyone any church that prays oh, these are just noise makers it's all about money and we have found out that there is no sensitivity in the body no discernment people don't pray people don't travel gone are the days when you see people lock themselves somewhere and cry to the god of heaven now people fast and all they just want cheap things oh man of god let me sow a seed just touch my head there are some things it's not just by impartation you must stay and cry upon the horns of the altar till something falls upon you from heaven we are going to pray one prayer and say lord what dimension is needed for my next level open me up unto it oh god lift your voice and pray lord if it is the prophetic that will take me to my next season then i open up my spirit for it if it's the miraculous that will take me to the next dimension if it's a healthy mental transformed mind lord i receive that dimension are we praying please if it's a restoration of fire upon my altar that is the requirement for the next dimension i receive it if it's the knowledge of administration and excellence that i need lord balance my life lord balance my life balance my church balance my business balance my understanding balance my life balance my life Take away from me the sarcasm for prophets. Take away the sarcasm for Bible study. Take away the sarcasm for prayer. Take away the sarcasm for diligence. And Lord, let me incorporate these dimensions as coming from you. Hallelujah. Listen to me, we're rounding up. There are very anointed people, very anointed people who don't know how to speak before great men. Because to them, every gathering of people is a church service. And then God sends you now to your destiny helper and you don't know how to speak. And they throw you away back to the prison. Although you can interpret dreams, you didn't understand the protocol of seeing Pharaoh because you ignored the person who can teach you how to communicate. So you find out that the ministries never cross Nigeria because no other region can accept you. You have not been trained to understand global leadership and you don't know how to synergize spirituality with people's culture. You travel to another person's culture, they jail you as a man of God because you do not understand the terms. There are other ministries that the revelation God is giving them should go to the whole earth. But your resentment for wealth has kept you poor. And so nobody can hear your voice. No tapes, no books, no nothing. Because prosperity that will give it wings is not there. I can look at a congregation and tell in a split second the dimension they are ignoring. Because I see prayer warriors who the the oldest person there may be 60 years no car no house no school fees the moment they are driving children from school fees is all is all the prayer warriors children that return back home because they have ignored it now let me tell you something about imbalance your imbalance makes you represent misrepresent god to your territory because they are depending unbelievers are depending on the idea you give them about god make sure you give them a balanced perception don't present to them a God who empowers people and removes prosperity. Don't present to them a God who all that he does is to give them money. 
and their spiritual lives they are not saved they are not born again they are going to hell but they have money that's a misrepresentation don't present to them a man of god that is anointed anointed and there's no room to teach the word so you have a congregation of members that never grow you have occultists in churches and they never never grow they don't understand the principles they destroy their homes half of a church is divorced with people because the teaching ministry there is no teaching priest there is power but there is no wisdom to share the ministry that keeps homes together are we together or you can have a crowd of people who never pray the prayer warrior in that whole church prays only for one hour because that dimension has been ignored we are going to pray one last prayer balance my life balance my life lift your voice and cry balance my life Lord I receive leadership Lord I receive prayer Lord I, see, I receive wisdom through the word Lord I receive favor Lord I receive excellence Lord I receive the warfare dimension I receive the prophetic I receive the deliverance dimension of the word every provision that the grace of God affords even if it is not working in my life I am open minded towards the body no criticism and no resentment I repent from criticizing any and every man of God regardless of the limitations I open myself to the multifaceted dimensions of God resident within his ecclesia I receive the dimension that brings speed I receive the dimension that brings establishment I receive the dimension that brings glory I receive the dimension that brings increase I receive are you praying Lord until now I've not seen the need to be filled with the Holy Ghost I thought it was just something for Pentecostals but right now I open my spirit to receive is a dimension needed in my life in your name we will rise I don't know you reign your name hallelujah there is a reason why satan attacks he does not attack you because of you listen god is comforting us already because there are many of us wondering what is all this lord what is this i will see something almost getting to me what is the thing? Why, why is Satan taking my case personal? There is a reason. The reason is not you. Don't be fooled. It's not you. The reason is something you represent. Something that is of God through you. Satan has seen that by God's preordination, your womb is supposed to carry one of the prophets that will herald God's end time agenda. And he says, whatever, make her marry wrong or make her not get married or make her get married to somebody who has the cause of barrenness. Just do whatever you can do to clamp this lady. Oh God, my father is 71. They are still staying in a rented house. Lord, would you open a door for me? And as you do this, Lord, you see my heart. I will renovate all the churches in our village. I will sponsor this I will buy a bus and Satan says buy a bus for nonsense renovate which church all of a sudden you find out that the business that everybody likes you suddenly your business partner starts saying I don't understand you again it's not the business partner my brother a commitment from you has touched the heart of God and it sounded an alarm to the gates of darkness you see, when you, when, when you understand how and why Satan attacks, then you will know why the power of God will continue to come around your life until victory is complete. Mm. 
one day I, I can't remember where I was driving to sometimes I just drive in the night alone and sometimes I just move and then I parked somewhere around that market side and I was looking at someone just passing and the Lord was telling me something about that guy and the Lord was telling me that guy going I just saw the guy just moving and he said that guy the devil has rubbish that guy true story and that in this guy's destiny he was supposed to be the first preacher in his entire lineage and I saw the boy moving with all these these rough and scattered boys around and I was just looking I said my God if your life does not have a message that gives God glory you will beg Satan to come he will run Satan a demon goes to a wilderness and because there's nothing in that wilderness that has God's assignment the demon casts itself out of the wilderness back to a human being that God can use remember Jesus said when a spirit leaves a man it goes to a wilderness he didn't find anything in that wilderness that is pro God and he left it back said I want the man because God can still use him I can tell you why Satan is threatened by everything around you your worship does something to him your commitment does something to him when Satan comes and sees our little children hearing the word of the Lord he says what can I do to this family to stop them from coming for koinonia and the easiest way is can I cripple their finances because if there is no money there's no food to eat there's no transport and if there's no transport there will be argument between daddy and mommy you see that wise plan all of a sudden you find out that something that would have worked does not work again and he steps back and allows you to blame yourself and while the children are suffering they say sorry it's time for koinonia i say koinonia what and the devil said that's it mission accomplished it was never about money that's why a lot of people say why is it that unbelievers who don't love god they are getting rich what in their life threatens satan it's not about I mean, look if you think it's about money and tea and bread and cars no sir satan was willing to give it to jesus he said jesus why go the long route just bow to me i will give you this meaning if satan if jesus bowed to satan all of a sudden even Caesar will be dethroned and Jesus could go and sit down and Satan doesn't mind provided you are my boy enjoy everything you never the devil will never allow you to hold the hands of God and hold the hands of the blessing he will say choose one hold the blessing and leave God or hold God and leave the blessing the miracle service says you can hold both. That's why we're here tonight. Yes, sir. That you can say, I can still serve God and pay my siblings' school fees because of the blessing of the Lord. I can still serve God and I don't need to go and collect any charm, yet I will prophesy to nonsense and cast out any demon. You see that? Listen, you are here tonight. I'm announcing to you very straight up what we are here for. We are not here to waste our time. We are here to stand in agreement with God. I have seen how people in ignorance allow the devil to make nonsense out of their lives. Choose between raising a godly family or not getting married choose between being a very wealthy man or a pastor hello choose between being the first graduate from your village or being a popular musician anything that you can use to give god glory is what satan is looking for he will find you he will haunt you and if you do not understand the systems of the kingdom, he will make sure that he makes nonsense out of your life. And listen, the moment he sees that your health and vitality and energy has been committed unto God, he will now find 
a particular disease and program it across your lineage not you if you have headache that means it may just be that you need you just need some time to rest satan is too wicked to just give you a headache satan wants to program something you heard that dear lady cancer in um the grandmother just like faith can be transferred so you program it in a way that a young lady is just 35 36 and all of a sudden she's feeling what is this ah mama died of cancer now i'm having cancer tomorrow another person has cancer those people don't need healing they need deliverance it looks like it's healing ask jesus woman thou art loose first when you are loose then he laid hands on her he said now you, your body can participate but the real thing is the bondage in the spirit are we together now yes anything you see in your family that is not only you that is suffering you need to stand for them today oh. if you are the only one having it it may just be your not understanding your this and that but provided you are not the only one no your grandmother was raped by a stupid man your mother was raped by a stupid man you you were raped by a stupid man must you wait until your daughter is raped you stand up and say in the name of jesus someone paid your grandmother's dowry and ran away they paid your mother's dowry and ran away now somebody is wanting to pay your dowry and, and run away you stand and say lord this must end look let me tell you nothing changes until men get angry enough to say lord it must stop are we together yes it must stop how about finances look at me there are some of you here i don't mean to insult you and i don't mean to embarrass you but let me tell you the truth until god does something to your hand money will never stay in your hand i'm not talking about money you can be as intelligent as whatever i'm telling you it takes more than a good transaction to keep this thing because money like a human being has a spirit a soul and a body the spirit of money is mammon or the holy spirit there has to be a controlling factor the soul of money is the 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 intellectual system that brings the exchange the body of money is the physical thing you are holding so if all you are holding is just the physical thing you are a joker there is a spirit that can call what is in your hand and it will leave you it's true so the devil sees that this family wants to call upon the name of the lord and make sure that everybody remains poor can i tell you this and i don't mean to insult you but more than 60 percent of the people seated here your major prayer point corporately as a family is oh god let your heavens be open so that your supplies can come there may be other things but you will prefer supplies a thousand times than your leg that is paining you to be to be fine there is an agenda i've shared with you my vision i will continue to share it years ago i was praying i think i was uh, i can't remember what was happening and then my my ceiling just disappeared i didn't see a building again and the next thing i looked and i saw a giant creature mighty creature the eyes as big as the head of a man and then it was it looked like a dinosaur but the tail had its own life meaning you could disconnect the tail from the body and it would still be in existence and it was just fuming with red eyes looking at me and saying so you think you can bring god's people into abundance that was the end that was when i agreed that prosperity is spiritual if all you have is a contract you are joking if all you have is a shop well done but you are in trouble if all you have is a good business you heard the testimony of this dear um wonderful man that came from koza that just shared here now estates and everything just given no it's not just a man that gave him there is a spirit behind it you need to be empowered to fail 
I hope you know that when you are failing consistently, there is an anointing making that happen. An anointing is simply an empowerment. Everybody hates you. You are supposed to bless me. As soon as I come, you hate me. I now go here and I'm too late. It's not normal. When the coincidences are too accurate, there is a spirit making it happen. Someone calls you and says, please come. Let me give you something to pay the rent of your family. The moment that statement happens, the devil makes sure that the man receives a call that is an emergency call. Are you seeing that now? And he leaves the office. You arrive at the office, you find out the door is locked. He says, if the young man comes, just give him 2000 to go back. It's a lie. The man did not leave. Something happened. There is a spirit behind that operation. How many of you have gone to, to seek people over something that is so simple? Maybe just a signature and it will take two weeks, three weeks. You believe it's normal? And then sometimes a man of God may pray for you and speak and you go back and the person who should not be there in the afternoon is now there. He was not there. An angel kept him there. This is how this kingdom operates. Your destiny helper, the destiny helper of your family can be two blocks away from you. But because there is no spiritual connection, my brother and my sister, you can stay 15 years. Whereas the person ordained by God to lift you is just two blocks. You will go to America and return back like a thief. You will go to UK and return back like somebody that God hates. But the day God decides to locate you, you will be surprised. Is God speaking to us? That's why we're here tonight. You can be a man of God and like the gentleman who listened to discerning the body. Probably God has been telling you, look, your ministry will never grow until you receive a word of impartation and prophecy. But you'll be surprised how you'll be planning for five years. I will come for koinonia. You will now say next week. You will say, Kai, uh, ah, I'm feeling cold. Let me just relax. As soon as you want to travel, your sister will just say, ah, I just came on break. Let me tell you, all those acting is a lie. But there's something about the will of man. The day you stamp your feet and say today, I name today as my day of breakthrough. The Bible said today if you hear his voice, every day becomes your today. Until the day your faith says no tomorrow again. It has to be today. Are we together? So tonight, I don't want you to sit down and waste your time. You are hearing people testify. My brothers and my sisters, I tell you by the grace of God, there is enough grace and power to turn your life, to bring any... It's not very difficult. No. It's just your connection. Stop the arguments, the war that is happening in your head. Can God do this? You can't leave Lagos, leave the east, leave the north, and come and sit down. You are wondering. You believe that God brought you to waste your time? No, sir. No, sir. I tell you, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, oh, can, can the hepatitis go? Can this go? We are talking God here. We are not talking the the chief consultant of a, a, a hospital, the God of heaven, can that yoke go? We are nine people in our family apostle. Nobody has a job. It's not about the job. The devil has seen that in the job of those nine people is the bread of maybe 30 children. Those nine people, the money from those nine people will empower a church to preach and save somebody who will become a mighty man and for the sake of that mighty man those nine people will remain poor it's not about the family hallelujah if satan had his way he will kill me crumble this ministry make every koinonia message around the world to disappear all of a sudden in everybody's phone if he can do that he can beat his chest and say I've tried ah but there's a song that says Satan shame unto you you know the song 
Don't sing it, oh. <laughs> we make our boast in the Lord. In the next few minutes, we are going to so rubbish the devil in this place. Let me tell you. First of Octo October, we'll let, we'll let the devil know what is in Nigeria. He has tasted what is in America, what is in Russia, what is in this. And then you see your life change. A miracle is a wonder. That, that the limit. Oh, hold his hands. Try to stop him. Two of you. You know that game they used to play? That you try. Oh, yeah. Do it now. Yeah. Don't, no, don't, don't draw him too much. Sorry. You are not very kind. Now, watch this. Are you seeing that now? This guy can be growing old every year. You are celebrating birthday and nothing is moving in your life. Because there is a devil somewhere determined to make sure you don't rise. Let me tell you my assignment. This is me now coming into this equation. My, my assignment is not to cut what is there. My assignment is to carry this like this, this one. Because you see, I can cut what is there and pass. You can enjoy breakthrough while you are about to go. He's going to hold you and say, come back. Apostle has gone. So the, the job has not been done. My assignment by the grace of God is to carry this mountain you are seeing and carry it out of the way. One, that's number one. That's not all. Then my assignment is to turn you to the direction. That's where prophecy is powerful. And then turn what would have come to you from that delay. If I leave you like this, you are not oppressed, but you, are, you still don't have breakthrough. You are free from oppression, but you have not entered your inheritance. So you can't testify. But whatever that is, when it comes to you and you go to it, and then I leave you, my job is to... And, and the thing is that all these things happen through words. The word that is sent to supervise and make sure you get to your inheritance. And then by next week, you are coming with an employment letter and you are on your knees saying, God, what is this? What is this? Then two weeks later, five people, all barring in your family, are saying, ah, I, I, I think I'm pregnant. Then you just remember, ah, what has happened? A man of God that you have space for 500 people in your church, and yet you see 10 people, 15. During a convention, they grow to 30. By the time service is finishing, there's 20 back. And all of a sudden, something happens. And one spectacular miracle happens by the next Sunday. In a way that even the critics say, I'm here in your church today to watch what happened. And you said, I never believed I would buy canopy for an overflow. But the anointing. God brought you here to change your life. Listen to me. I repeat, God brought you here to change your life. He didn't bring you to just be happy that a program called Nonia. No. This is a miracle service. A miracle service is not a teaching service. I will take out time and teach you, but this is a miracle service. There are some of you, you may not be sick, you may not be oppressed, but you need to carry something that ends every argument. Result, my brothers and my sisters, is the end of every argument. I can lie to you. Or you can deceive me that you are having a pocket square. And I can argue because I'm not seeing it. But if you bring out a pocket square and I see it, this is the end of the argument. It would be stupid to still argue. At that point, you will let everybody know you are a madman. This is the result. Could it be that you have been talking too much? Let the anointing talk. I, I, will, I will build the house. I know God is faithful. I will do this. And God is saying, no. Moses only spoke small. And then the rod kept talking. You have been talking forever. Some of you, you are here in this meeting because there is a rod that God will give you. You stood before the Red Sea for forever. It refused to part. But God brought you here to carry something that you go back with it and it will shock you, my brothers and my sisters, that that Red Sea will part and you will call your family and say, finally, we've been wondering how to build a bridge, but we found an easier road that the river can part. 
tonight i want you to know that god wants to do this number one because he loves you but number two there is a dimension of glory only your results can bring to him don't ever let anyone fool you hearing is our father glorified john 15 and verse 8 this is how i am glorified galatians chapter 1 verse 29 says and they glorified god in me not that they glorified god on the throne they looked at my life they saw that god can do this you no father no mother who gave you the job who did you know from the top you're a man of god i used to know your father as a wheelbarrow pusher and you say my brother is what god can do if it is the lord's doing it is marvelous For as long as your life is ordinary, your ministry is ordinary, your business is ordinary, you will continue to explain and explain and argue and explain and explain and explain. Let me tell you, God takes away shame from our lives by giving us results. Did you hear what I said? God does not take away shame by explaining anything to anybody. He does something in your life and he does it in a way like Julius Berger will build a house and put B. God will do it and put his signature. They'll say, no, this business cannot be human. I hear testimonies of people every time. The things that God does in and through their lives. A wonder please let your heart be open no don't let the devil make you come here and waste your time whether you are outside overflow one overflow two overflow three online whatever nation you are following just listen I believe him I may not claim I know everything about him but this God when God decides to stand up from his throne he said now arise from your throne God can stand up. Have you heard that the earth is his footstool? So when he decides to stand up and say, who has made the cry of my daughter to continue coming? The Bible says, even the mountains keep like lambs. My God is mighty. Our own belief many times is the reason why God does not move. We come and sit down and pile up. Some of you have come with all kinds of forms and pictures and that's wonderful. But you are there wondering, can you move, oh God, concerning my money? Can you move concerning my money? Can you move concerning my health? Can you move concerning my wife? And God is saying, yes, I can. I am willing and I'm able. And then the devil comes very quickly and says, if God could move, didn't man of God pray for you in, by March? Didn't your pastor fast seven days for you? And you say, it's true. Oh, that's the devil. Tonight, your faith must be open. Your faith must rise to the heavens to say, Lord, I don't want to leave this place just knowing I'm blessed. I want to know what happened to me. I want to hold a substance. God is speaking to someone here. This, this sharing the grace and saying, ah, were you blessed? Oh my God, miracle service was powerful. That's not a blessing, no. You can hold on to something and know that I left this place. What happened? The pain is gone. I left this place. What happened? That before the grace is shared, you check your phone and all of a sudden, a text that you have been waiting for for five years. Now, that's an evidence. This is what we are talking about. All of a sudden, you are sitting down while you are seeing me preach. You have been trusting God for that prophetic grace. And while the preaching is going, all of a sudden, your eyes are open. You are saying, so this is what the apostle is saying. And you are seeing the power of God touching somebody and then you hear me say there's someone here and you are saying my God I've gotten this Elisha knew when he got it Elisha knew when he got it he went to the sea where is the Lord God of Elijah and the river parted you are trusting God for the grace for revelation that before the meeting is over all of a sudden scriptures it's as if it's an injection from your spirit you are just connecting one revelation to this and you're saying I, I can't remember studying this 
and then you discern that something is happening something is happening that heaviness has gone where is the fear yesterday night i couldn't sleep the fear of death is gone listen philemon chapter 1 and verse 6 says that the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in christ if you don't expect it and you don't pay attention to it if i ask this gentleman to give me water i'm expectant i'm not expecting a handkerchief i'm expecting water anything i see that looks like water is attracting my attention a double-minded man let that man not think he will receive anything from god thank god for people falling and flying up and down but your eyes is stayed like a flint lord i left lagos this morning and i came here i left bielsa and i came here my car almost had an accident lord i would have been in a convention now as a man of god i left it to be here i'm looking for something let something come from heaven and your hunger is like a force that is drawing something from heaven and all of a sudden boom i tell you in one minute i remember many years ago when i was standing in the rain had bonke crusade there were crowds of people like this I didn't know what who wore whether you wore red or green or blue my eyes were fixed lord what did you give this man that made every nation to open to him what kind of man is this that no one criticizes him Abba, i didn't just go there to receive anointing for miracles alone no when it came i knew that i got it i knew that i got it listen my brothers and my sisters you can know that the load has been lifted you can know that the prayer has been answered you can know that the project is a done deal are we together the grace is here more than available for you and whilst we begin to pray don't just watch others receive be sensitive you are the one who knows what you are here for are we together in one minute I'd like you to open your mouth and cry. Mention specifically, why are you here? Talk to the Lord. Please pray. Please pray. Pray with all your heart. Lord, I had a young man testify that you gave him properties. I had a young lady, born, had never smelled. She was not in a miracle service, just listening to a message. And all of a sudden, the healing power of God touches that lady and that's it. Lord, I'm tired of this lump. Lord, I'm tired of this medical report. I'm tired of watching my mother cry, my father cry. I'm tired of my ministry not growing. I'm tired of staying at a particular level in the anointing. Lord, I've heard testimonies of favor. I have an idea of what happens when a man is carrying favor. But Lord, I don't see it yet in my life. I'm here tonight for this one reason. Lord, even after the deliverance series, I've been seeing certain things happen in my life and my family that pre-informs me that I will still need a second touch a second touch over my family my loved ones are not born again Lord I can't watch them go to hell like this
don't be tired of praying please cry from the depth of your heart Lord I'm not going back with this disease I'm not going back with this medical report no way no way no way I insist I'm not going back barren tired of miscarriages the universe what can't you do what can't you do Jesus you're the name above every other name what can't you change what can't you change Jesus one more time creator Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? I want you to see the Lord lifting your burden. You're the name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change, Jesus? You are able, great and mighty God. You are able, Jesus. You are able, great and mighty God. You are able. I will continue to read it for you Isaiah chapter 61 please give it to us the messianic prophecy Jesus' own manifesto he's saying this is what I came to do Isaiah 61 it says the spirit of the Lord we are reading from verse 1 to 4 is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Start looking for your own as I'm reading. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those that mourn. 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beautiful ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified for and they shall build the old wastes they shall raise up the former desolations they shall repair waste cities he says the desolations of many generations i like you to pray whatever needs to be fixed in your life and family insist that tonight is the night when it will happen overflow one pray overflow two overflow three by the roadside those following from around the world open up your heart and pray from the depth of your heart
Alléluia. Alléluia. The Lord just showed me something like a train. You know, a speed train, not like we have it now. Just like a train, just pass like this. And I believe in my spirit that that is a typology of a grace for speed. Listen, we are going to pray now. And like I always say, you'll find out when I pray, you're going to see people running around in and out. Please just guide them and bring them out. Ushers, whether you are an usher or not, the ushers can only do so much. I want to pray. Once I pray that prayer, listen, please, I don't want you to get, listen, please, hold on. I don't want, it, the idea is not about people falling down, carrying them. Please, let your spirit be open. Be open for when your word will come. Be open for when God will visit and locate you. That, that's, that's what you're here for. So I want to pray that prayer now. I'm seeing a lot of those people at overflow one a lot of the people who will be affected by this prayer are in overflow one the overflow outside you see let me tell you this when a man listen when a man does not have speed in his life you don't have the entire lifetime to do all that you should do it it takes more than just power right Please help those in Overflow 1, my God. I'm seeing very strange angelic activities happening already at Overflow 1 outside. Now, listen. When there is no speed in your life, listen. Imagine that I have to walk from here to maybe the roadside and I'm tiptoeing on one leg. Am I moving? Yes, sir. But when will you arrive there? The pressure that you will mount on this leg, it will affect you to a point that you may not even stand it. And so God, when he wanted Elijah to move, because he had already been delayed, the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. He was empowered of the spirit and he ran. I, I, I'm, I'm saying this before I pray so that you don't just think it's about anointing and people running around. No. When that grace comes upon you, what God is saying is, I'm ready to shift you. That within a short time, you will see a lot happen in your life. In three days, the work of redemption was done. Three days. This powerful redemption did not happen in 12 years. It happened in three days. By the end of three days, Jesus had ascended, poured his blood, returned back. He was ready. It was now to launch the church. Big things don't have to take plenty time. When the hand of God comes upon you, you will see that a defining moment in your life can happen so fast. Are you ready now? Lift your hands. I want to pray. I will do the praying. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is asking me to shout Jesus, not you now. I'm the one shouting Jesus. I'm going to shout it and at the third time, I tell you it's going to be an avalanche of the power of God. Let me have those people out. Lord, you are bringing speed to your people. And I know that there are angels all around. It's time to change people's levels. And even as you have instructed me, oh God, as I declare that name that is above every other name, I pray that anyone under the sound of my voice who has been crippled in one position, that in the name of the God of heaven, an anointing will shift that person into his destiny. Jesus, that's number one. Mm. Jesus, that's number two. Get ready now. Shabalakata. Jesus. Let that anointing right now. I shift man. Speed. Kabarakatosha. Speed to your life. Oh God, let every delay be broken now. I command the spirit of delay. Be broken. Speed. I shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Help that woman. Please help that mama there. Shakatoka tabarakata. 
please help them whether you are an usher or not speed speed in the name of jesus i command everything that has refused to move in your life i move it by the power of the holy ghost i'm still praying i'm still praying the holy ghost is moving you except this prayer is not for you there is an anointing that must shift you must shift you by the power of the holy ghost Lord shift them to their destinies please you will need to help the ushers whether you are an usher or not just, just help them there's only so much we can do there's no power that keeps you down this is miracle service lift your hands please I'm praying For some of you now is the same prayer but it's no longer just for you you may not be experiencing it but your family needs speed the anointing now is moving from individuals to families lord where are the families that need the shift of the holy ghost i decree and declare right now i speak by this apostolic and prophetic grace families be shifted now speed 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 Speed, Papa Rakoto Shegeta, Epre Kete 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 Kete. I decree it, I declare it. I decree it and I declare it. Shapa Kato Katabala Katosh. No more delay. I stretch my hands I'm seeing an angel of the Lord just on this row I stretch my hands right now I move people God is moving people here I decree it, I declare I decree I declare I decree I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus it must work for you I shift you no more delay in your life this lady wearing hijab right now the lord is shifting you that lady in the name of jesus i stretch my hands let the anointing of the spirit take away delay from your life right now in the name of jesus now all those in front i'm praying any chain that has tied anyone's leg or any family at the count of three i speak into the realm of the spirit those chains go now one two three go 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 i lose those families now I command chains be broken now let the families be set free in the name of Jesus young lady lift your hands you you put in your hand on your mouth. yes i'm seeing an angel pouring oil on you and the lord is saying that he's shifting things i'm seeing like a chain on your head being broken now i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus let that chain be broken let that chain i command that devil i'm seeing a snake in the spirit let her go now in the name of jesus hallelujah be sensitive i want to pray a very serious prayer now he said behold i give you authority over snakes and scorpions 
if you don't like the prayer and pray no problem but i want to pray a dangerous prayer i'm seeing snakes this is what i'm seeing over families now let me tell you this reptilian objects is a representation of the spirit of sorcery in the name that is above all names i declare every spirit that has caged any family here i decree and i declare right now by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus and at the count of three everyone shout jesus as you shout jesus i see fire everywhere inside and outside there is massive deliverance about to happen i command every devil and every activity of sorcery to leave now one two three in the name of jesus i crush satan i crush his works inside outside i command every power every force go now go now hallelujah please be sensitive just give me the volume i'm seeing fire by my left and right just bring out all the people that fall under the anointing now as i'm walking here in the name of jesus i command that devil you must go now you must go now you must go now i declare it by the anointing of the holy ghost as soon as i come close to you that fire and there is an anointing you can't stand it it's impossible as soon as i come close to you as soon as i come close to you that fire there is a judgment let them go now i'm coming this way right now in the name of jesus the power of god is coming this area this direction let them go now release them i come by the anointing of the holy ghost let them go now let them go now release them i'm seeing someone here tied around the stomach release them now let them go in the name of jesus let them go now by the power of the holy ghost i stretch my hands here right now the fire of god is setting people free now lose them lose them lose them lose them lose them lose them now lose them lose them in the name of jesus lose them now those outside lift your hands god is about to set you free please i like you to pray everyone pray enough is enough tonight everyone pray everyone pray now listen overflow one listen to me listen you don't have to touch me please you don't have to touch me but in the name of jesus hear me the lord brought me out here because the time has come for something to leave someone as soon as i pass here i don't have to come close to you you are going to feel fire all all over that fire that will be the end of it you must testify right now i stretch my hands right right now it's over over now let them go 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 now the spirit of sorcery i cause it now the spirit of witchcraft i cause it now please help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves go go be free i command that power by fire by fire by fire it leaves you now those of you here i want you to lift your hands overflow two overflow two lift your hands let me go to the front there enough is enough as i pass this place listen i want you to be very sensitive there is a strong anointing tonight overflow two please help your neighbors i'm only going to pass here right there 
as soon as I come close to you, except God is not God, if there is any force holding you, holding your life and your ministry, it must go right now. Right now, in Jesus' name, be free. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I command those devils, go, 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 go. Let them go, go. Go now. Release them. Release them. Release them. Every covenant, release them. I break that power now. Now, now, now. Be broken. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, listen. I didn't know we have an extra overflow here. I want to pray for those by the side here. As I stretch my hands to you, please don't waste your time. I'm seeing fire already. Here. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, those of you by the roadside, one, two, let them go by the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you, please help them so they don't injure themselves. I declare, I decree, and I declare, you are free. Praise the Lord. Overflow 3, your life is about to change. Listen. Listen. Honestly, there is, there is an anger in my spirit. Because as I entered, I'm just seeing chains everywhere. Right now, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, bring all of them out. From the front to the back. Right now, at the count of three, overflow 3, all of you shout Jesus. One, two, three. Every power, bring them out. Every yoke, every force, every operation of darkness, bring them out. I'm seeing chains on people's feet. Chains, chains, chains be broken now. Be broken now, be broken now, be broken now, be broken now. Change, be broken now. Hallelujah. Bring them out. Overflow three, lift your hands and see praying. Listen. I'm seeing, I'm seeing patterns. Something that is not just happening to you alone. Happening to your father, your mother. As soon as I pray now, I'm seeing fire all over this place. Anyone under that case, you must be free now. At the count of three, anyone holding any pattern, any generational thing, in the name that is above all names, at the count of three, one, two, three. Shout Jesus. Bring them out. That devil must let you go today. My God, look at what God is doing in Overflow 3. Shaprakato shekete skaba. Embrakato koto shabaria. Look at what God is doing in this place. Hallelujah. Listen to me. The Lord is showing me. I'm coming back. But I don't know why God is, is, is on the case of overflow 3. The Lord is showing me some of you. I'm seeing you are climbing a ladder. But that ladder breaks down and brings you down. You see things as if it's supposed to happen. But a force draws you back. The moment someone wants to lift you, you will have a dream in the night. And in that, in that dream, someone will come to sleep with you. Or something will happen. Right now at the count of three, shout Jesus. I command those devils. One, two, three. Let them go now. 
let them go now total emancipation Hallelujah. Jakakos kaparusi kata hasana katushia. Embrekata katos kata breketish. Now, now, all those who are under the anointing here outside, I pass a decree that every power that has held you, I speak as one send. At the count of three, let them go. One, two, three, go, 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 let them go. Lose your hold over their lives. Let them go now. Let them go now. Let them go now. Hallelujah. I'm inside this place now. And I'm standing in the spirit. I've not started impartation yet. But the Lord is showing me the number 12. And the Lord is saying there are 12 people here. There is a strong call upon your life. There is a mighty anointing. Lord, where are they? Shakatos kapakarikata. Drink of that wine. Mantekatos ketekekata. Shaprakata. A ministry of signs and wonders. Ministry of signs and wonders. A ministry of signs and wonders. A ministry of signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. I'm still praying. The anointing of the spirit is still locating men. I don't know why God is talking about ministry. The call. Don't run away from the call. Don't run from the call. A ministry of signs and wonders. The Lord is telling someone, you are the liberator of your family. A ministry of signs. Signs, 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 signs. There are ladies here. Entering that ministry of signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Main auditorium, lift your hands. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a distribution of the healing anointing going on in the main auditorium and I stretch my hands from here it doesn't matter what overflow you just be sensitive to what God is doing main auditorium I'm seeing eight people eight people in the main auditorium at the count of three right now in the name of Jesus fire will come upon your hands I'm prophesying to the main auditorium but everybody can receive I decree and declare that healing anointing one two three let that anointing come now let it come now fresh fire hallelujah listen listen I'm seeing oh my god the Lord is opening my eyes here I'm I'm seeing someone don't don't be ashamed and don't be embarrassed your father I don't know if I'm seeing something like a priest this is someone that worships something like an idol is in your house I'm not saying you're a bad person please I'm not saying you're a bad person you grew up seeing this happen that they worship those idols that gentleman is here in overflow three or oh, 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 here Please, who is that person? Come. I want to break that thing now from your life. Please, quickly. Please, make sure you hear what I say before you come. Just clear, make way for them. The power of witchcraft. Young man. You're going to be a mighty man of God. I don't know you. Lift your hands. An anointing is coming upon you now. Huh? It will shift you to a realm of signs and wonder. Or let that anointing come upon him right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold my hands, my dear. The power of idols. In the name of Jesus. I break that force now. I break that force now. I break that force now. 
testimony of breakthrough for you and for your family in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah I'm praying listen I stretch my hands towards you and I speak I don't know what it is that you have been involved in but in Jesus name I'm stretching my hands why am I seeing fire leaving my hands who is it looking for in the name of Jesus Christ I command everything that is not of God be broken now the blood be broken now by the blood be broken now by the blood be broken now by the blood be broken now hallelujah just two more things i'll do here whether i'm in this overflow or not i just stood here to show you that it makes no difference i know the larger congregation is here lift your hands all of you if you can just lift it as high to the heavens now i'm seeing you don't have to come out but i'm seeing keys in the spirit listen this is access to a new dimension and i'm seeing the number 44 just lift your hands you don't need to say anything father i stand as one sent those keys are locating families and locating people it may be a key that explains why things have not been working lord from the front to the back like a mighty wind whoever must receive that key receive it now receive it now receive it now in the mighty name of jesus christ let her go now out out now now this lady wearing a red hair tie in the name of jesus i'm seeing a grace that is coming let that anointing come upon you in the name of jesus christ let that anointing come upon you hallelujah overflow three i'm seen by the spirit the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing the names of members of your family like written already written already i'm going to pray listen except god has not sent me as i'm praying some of you instantly the power of god will come upon you and god is going to open your eyes you are going to see victory and deliverance in fact i see a family where three of your siblings they've married none of them has a child none of them at all has a child they've done everything to do but there's no child but i stand in the name of the lord father where are those families right now like a mighty wind like a mighty wind oh god let it end right now let there be an opening let there be an opening let there be an opening in the name that is above all names let there be an opening young lady come call that lady for me call this gentleman too this man yes bring him in the name of jesus you need to be delivered i command the spirit that torments you to go now by the power of the holy ghost i release you my dear hold my hands to you i'm saying that your life is about to change two weeks from now it will surprise you what the lord is going to do in your life i decree and i declare it over your life i stand by the anointing and i pray for you father according to your word within two weeks turn this lady's life around supernaturally in the name of jesus Emeka, who is Emeka? 
Emeka. I'm hearing a name Emeka. Overflow three here. I'm just talking to Overflow three people. Emeka, Emeka. Please quickly, please quickly. Don't waste that time. Where is that gentleman? What's your name? I want to pray. What do you do? I'm going to pray for you. You're not from this place. You came for NYC. I want to pray. Lift your hands. Because I'm seeing, look at me. The Lord is giving you the grace for wealth. Huh? I want you to believe it. But every prosperity that does not have an assignment to end up destroying the people. You love Jesus with all your heart? I want to pray for you. It will surprise you the way God will begin to turn things around in your life. Father, change this gentleman's story in the name of Jesus forever. Overflow 3, I'm still praying. The spirit of prophecy is coming on nine people. I will count four at the fourth count. One, two, three. Where are they, oh God? Four. Nine people. Nine people. The spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy. All of you open your mouth and begin to pray. Everything you desire. Overflow three. Open your mouth and decree. Open your mouth and decree. I'm seeing an anointing around here. Who is that person? I stretch my hands. I'm seeing chains breaking just within this region as I'm standing here. Father, let the chains be broken now. The anointing of the Spirit. Find that person. Let the chains be broken right now. 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 Be broken now. Please, everyone pray. Everyone pray. Everyone pray. Everyone pray. Hold on. There's someone here. The Lord is saying, I'm rolling away your shame. I'm seeing light. As I was just passing, I just saw light. Two people. Let the anointing find those people now. Two people. Right now, I decree. Overflow two. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Shame, reproach. Let it go now. Shame, reproach. Let it go now. Shame, reproach. Help them. Let it go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is Gabriel? Gabriel. Gabriel. I'm hearing a name. Who is Gabriel? Is there someone like that? You are wearing a maroon. You are wearing like maroon kaftan. Gabriel. Maroon Kaftan. Is there someone like that? What's your name? Do I know you? Lift your hands, my brother. God is about to change your life. God is about to turn your life around. Uh, where are you coming from? I want to pray for you. You love Jesus? What is... Is it Oleku or Aleku? What is that? Huh? Huh? Where are you from? Benway State. You are from Benway State. This is what has tied down your life and your family. I want to pray for you. I'm not a herbalist there. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this gentleman be free right now. I command that devil to leave you now. Just keep him there. In the name of Jesus. These two people, this gentleman, you, yes, and the lady by you, come quickly. Please. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, victory. What do you do, my friend? You're a student. You love Jesus. I want to pray for you. Huh? Yes, Are you together? Yes, sir. Because I saw light on you. Husband and wife? Yes, please, Well, I'm not going to discuss your issue now, but two of you need deliverance. Eh? You love Jesus, but you need serious deliverance based on what I'm seeing now. Huh? You are not husband and wife yet, but I'm seeing a lot of stories. Father, in the name of Jesus, look at me. You're going to be very wealthy, but the first thing you need to edit are your friends. Huh? Hear what I'm telling you. Huh? My, uh, my sister, you know what I'm saying, right? 
Huh? So your friends. Huh? Confirm, sir. Listen to me. You are not truly born again if your friends don't change. Hear it from me. All this born again that is one leg and you have all kinds of friends. If, if I am a drunkard and you are not a drunkard but we are staying together, I'm close to a drunkard. That means I can be implicated by everything a drunkard can be implicated by. Is that true? So, my friend, you love God, eh? But you see, um, look at what I'm doing. One leg in, one leg out. Huh? Don't be embarrassed. When I make the altar call, you need to run and come quickly. Jesus is not just some religious thing that you just run to. Just for, No, 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 no. Let, let's take God serious and take him. Look what i see my friend i see god turning your life in a way that will surprise you but friends and this is not just a message to this gentleman alone it's a message to many of us because the demons that destroy our lives work by bringing wrong friends they make you compromise your values it's not your fault but when they come they are vocal about what they believe and because you do not have a community of like-minded believers but let me tell you the truth it matters who you listen to if the devil positions a wrong person to counsel you and they give you a counsel of Ahitophel God may be calling you to a great ministry but you will hear a counsel that would destroy God's purpose over your life I pray for everyone here that in the name of Jesus if you are under the yoke of wrong friends I stand and I speak right now. May the Lord set you free this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, there is favor on your life, but it's not speaking at all. Hmm? You are a nice lady. Come. I'm looking at you. I'm seeing a young lady, but I'm seeing the face of you and another old woman flashing me and going back see wickedness is real oh. let me tell you my brothers and my sisters wickedness is real huh this is a young beautiful lady you see her standing but you now look at it do you know let me explain something whatever overflow just listen i want to explain something you see this is the mistake that we men of god make sometimes i can look at a beautiful lady like this now and see the face of an old woman and if my word base is not sound and balanced i will i will interpret the vision i've seen verbatim and now call her a witch you see the mistake we make that we call people and then assuming now they are married i will now advise him and say mr man you married a witch oh you do you know what it means to be a witch so God is, you see that God is, is balancing a lot of things in our lives. Let's be careful. Because sometimes we may see a vision. I already know what is happening. It is true that the lady needs help. But it doesn't mean, imagine that I look at this lady now and say, my dear, you're a witch. No, this is a lovely, she has a beautiful heart. I already see by the spirit. Very beautiful heart. But it, beauty and a good heart does not take away oppression. It takes the power of God. How terrible art thou in your ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. So many of you are here. You find out for instance. The moment you enter a relationship. Come for instance. As you mean I enter a relationship with this lady. And you find out that there may be something wrong in her life. And it starts affecting me. Have you seen that happen? I'm doing well in business. But just because I married this lady. I start going down. And now you meet a man of God. And if, the man, if you are in ministry here, please be careful. You have to trust God for grace to be balanced. Are we together? I can now look at this lady and say, Ah, your wife is the reason behind your failure. Um, what I'm trying to say is that, Oh, there might be a spirit connected to her that is affecting me and the works of my hands. But it doesn't mean she's bad. A good man of God will bring about that separation. And then through the transforming power of the word, now help this couple to stand and become the best of couple because a body without a spirit is dead so it's not about condemning and destroying the body are you getting it now so my dear let me tell you you're a wonderful lady huh we are going to deal with this nonsense now this whatever it is that the devil is bringing, because this thing is affecting your life you don't know why good things don't come to you you're a very nice lady hold my hands father 
hold it with both of your hands i decree and declare ah i'm seeing fire leaving my hands in the name of jesus i command this devil i'm seeing through the face of this old woman be gone now my dear i set you free and i open the door of favor for you right now please everybody lift your hands i'm seeing i've not seen this in a long time i'm seeing the map of nigeria and i'm seeing an anointing going to benway state benway state now benway state you are from benway state you see that that power will touch you even if you don't know what state you are from benway state lord where is in the name of jesus the power of god is bringing deliverance benway state in the name that is above all names in the name that is above all names in the name of jesus madam i'm going to pray for you two things i'm seeing that the devil wants to put stroke complete stroke the devil wants to paralyze you from head to toe but we're going to destroy that now in the name of jesus hold my hands i decree and declare be free now by the power of the holy spirit madam i don't know you but ah you please come Hi. This is your first time coming i need to pray for you what do you do ma you are jobless ma huh i'm looking at you and i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit two of your hands are tied there is nothing you do that works and prospers it's not normal you are a very good woman please don't be embarrassed i hope i'm not embarrassing you i want to pray for you I give you three weeks 21 days ma your life will turn around in a way that will surprise you i lay my hands right now and i declare i'm seeing chains leaving you i command those chains to go father turn her life around in the name of jesus in the name of jesus please open your mouth and begin to pray hold on hold my hands in the name of jesus christ i open that closed door now i open that closed door now by the power of the holy ghost please open your mouth and begin to pray everyone open your mouth and pray the lord is asking me to stand here just here just to stand here because the lord is bringing breakthrough here and here here and here right now here and here i command right now by the power of the holy spirit every planting that is not of god i uproot it now i uproot it now i uproot it now lift your voice and begin to pray please lift your voice and begin to pray in the name of jesus lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and begin to pray hallelujah Praise the Lord. I know our time is gone. We are going to be very fast. Sir, you're welcome, sir. Can I pray for you, sir? Why are they here? Priest. You, sir. You are a priest? I'm, I'm, I serve, my father served and died. And, and, Sorry, where are you from, sir? I'm from Mallory. Sir, I want to pray for you. The Bible says, even the lawful captives even the lawful captives my brothers and my sisters you will be surprised to see what happens in your life after this miracle service this this woman come madam you yes come please quickly come we're out of time say in jesus name say it in jesus name my life is about to change say it again say in jesus name reproach is leaving me now in the name of jesus let it go forever in jesus name sir i hold your hands and in the name of jesus every ordinance that is not of god help him i command that it is broken right now you are an elderly man but i use you as a point of contact we break every ordinance of darkness this this lady too priest you your dad your father is a priest currently oh where Oshun state don't be embarrassed eh? you are here because jesus wants to help you lord jesus it is not your will that any man perish 
but that everyone comes to the knowledge of the truth i deliver this lady right now everything they have given you to drink and eat i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and i set you free now be gone now out let it leave her i'm seeing that the father has given her so many things in her life but in the name of jesus hi jesus power is really super power really super power that in one moment something that has been done in a lifetime can live out now everything that is not of god our father is a priest or not her uncle direct father imagine how many times she has been involved in all of these things but in jesus name you are set free this this man too why is he here look at my eyes just look at my eyes you are receiving the healing anointing now huh? in the name of jesus christ lord grant him access to the healing anointing your healing power now oh dear our time is gone this is sometimes i honestly wish that this this because there are so many things i see but we have to work with time this lady you come hurry up now please come uh, we're out of time wonderful lady look at me you are a savior to your family you hear what i said you are a savior you may look small but you are a savior to your family the only thing is that you need to continually be serious with god your heart with him your heart with him hold my hands father in the name of jesus i take away distraction from her life right now by the anointing of the holy spirit i take away distraction i take away distraction okay we have we've not even prayed for the sick girl. my dear come this lady waving your hands come quickly your life is about to change come where are you coming from you are coming from abuja yes, i'm here with my husband husband yeah. where are you sir let's clap for the husband <laughs> two of you came from abuja Last time you came with for som came. i can't remember you came with you oh your son was a graduate of som no we came with him oh okay so graduate I want to pray. What do you do, sir? Um, I'm a minister of God, but at the same time, I do business. But it's not sir, working. I want to pray for you. Eh? Things are not working. You need the anointing. You are a sincere man. My dear, the prophetic grace is coming on you as I'm speaking now. In the name that is above all names, I stretch my hands. That anointing, you will start having dreams. Receive that grace. Two of you need empowerment. Ministry ministry without genuine empowerment will make it look as if you are wasting your time are you a man of god stand up stand up take that anointing now in the name of jesus you step into a new dimension i take away shame and reproach from your life and ministry from today you step into a realm of signs wonders miracles in the name of jesus can i pray for you sir look at me hold my hands hold my hands just hold it with both of your hands in the name of jesus i transfer grace signs and wonders strange testimonies your business between now and 30th of november sir your finances will change you and your wife in ways that will surprise you you will come back and testify in the name of jesus christ this man waving your hands come together with that woman by your side who is she come please two of you quickly let's appreciate them as they come oh, 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 oh. you sir i want to pray for you ah. madam i'm looking at you you're a nice woman but i'm seeing you carrying a load huh i'm seeing you like this and i'm seeing a load on your head 
and if I don't pray for you, this load is going to destroy you. I want to pray for you. Where are you coming from? Are you new here? Bielsa. Bielsa. Hmm. All the way. I think we should appreciate them. What do you do, sir? I'm a pastor. You're a pastor. You're in ministry, both of you? Evangelist. My ministry is separate. Your ministry is separate, evangelist. but both of you came from yes, Bielsa. You're an evangelist. Yes. You pastor a church? Yes, sir. How long has it been? Okay, I was uh, about four years now in Bielsa. But you were somewhere? Yes, I was in Abuja. You were in Abuja? Yes. And then you left Abuja and went to Bielsa. Do you know what happened? Is it your church now? You're serving someone else's church. Okay, I want to pray for you. Because what I see God do through your life, I'm seeing God giving you two things. The grace for leadership, number one. Number two, the grace for finances. These two graces, God is giving it to you. I don't know you, sir. I'm seeing you for the first time. Ma, you're an evangelist. I'm going to pray for you. What do you do? You hold crusades and all of that? No, I, I usually have meetings every month and then I speak on radio. I have a live radio. I do my evangelical on radio. And then oh, you TV. do a live radio? Yes, live radio talk show. Three things. One, barrenness. Two, poverty. Three, witchcraft. You are carrying the grace to smash nonsense out of these three things as you are going back. Don't forget. Huh? The same grace on you, I'm seeing it come on this lady. This one. This one. This lady I'm talking to. I want to pray for you. Sir, this thing is an election of grace. You see, I'm, I'm also a spectator. The same way you are watching. Me too, I'm watching. With wonder and shock, the way this thing works. That God can just change a man's life overnight overnight evangelist my hold my hands father this is a dear woman of god all the way from bielsa i stand by the anointing of the holy spirit and i declare fresh anointing fresh dimensions in the spirit and i pray madam the lord is asking me to pray for your finances seriously for your finances and then the lord is saying i should tell you to pray for faithful workers I'm seeing you do a program for women when you go back. This thing I'm seeing is going to be a powerful program. There is a program in Abuja that looks like what you would do. It's called When Women Pray. I'm seeing that same kind of grace on you. That you are going back to Bielsa and God is giving you uncommon grace for women. In the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare you carry that grace right now, madam. My God will honor you. Ah! In the name of Jesus, supernatural grace. Drink of that wine, sir. I'll pray for you. The grace for leadership, the grace for finance. But I'm, ah, it's not only pastoring I'm seeing you do. What else do you do? I manufacture paint. You manufacture paint. That's right. Sir, what am I seeing? This is somebody, it's, it's not directly the government. But this is somebody that is connected to the government. The Lord is going to connect him to you. It's, it has something to do with supplies. That thing will make you millions overnight in a way that it will surprise you. Please write it. You will see it happen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man of God. I stretch my hands. Drink of that wine. That anointing. Drink of that wine. You will never be the same. I stretch my hands. I take away every limitation from your life. And I decree and I declare your life turns around from today in the name of Jesus. Give Jesus praise. Goodness, 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 goodness. Can we still pray for the sick? We can't close this without praying for the sick. In the name of Jesus. Be healed from it now. I command that devil, that virus. Go! Now! In the name of Jesus. You go and write your test. Bring back your results. Go. Listen. I, can we? Oh dear. 
You see how sometimes this thing, we are really constrained. That's why we do our best. The healing anointing is already flowing. God wants to heal. Maybe I'll just pray. I'll just pray for the sick from here. We'll do it that way. Right? But make no mistakes. Just that you, that you are not coming out doesn't mean I want to pray for you now. We'll take a few testimonies now. In the last three or four months, I have seen, I don't know why this happens, but I have seen a dimension of the healing power of God. Very creative miracles. So I want to pray. You are trusting God for a miracle. Lay your hand right now on your body quickly. I want to pray for you now. Please believe God for a miracle. Now, this is what will happen. Overflow one two three the roadside and then those following us online our time is gone but as soon as i pray for you now i pray for you the power of god is going to come upon you i'm going to ask you to check yourself praise the lord we may not take all the testimonies but since we have chosen this method now as soon as i pray i ask you to check yourself you will be surprised what has happened to you and whether you are in overflow one two or three I'm going to ask you to run very quickly. You're going to come right here. Pastor Jimmy will be here with Pastor Alpha. They will just check you and we'll take one or two of the testimonies and I'll just confirm that. Um, how many of you brought your prayer request? Let me see. Did you bring your prayer request? Okay, ushers, this is what you, I want you to do. PR department, help them. Protocol, please help them. While I'm praying for the sick, I think we can do it too. Your prayer request, please make sure that your prayer request or that of your loved ones get to the ushers just lift it the ushers have a system of collecting it you don't have to be rowdy those outside you can pass it to the last person in the aisle if you will not bring any confusion you can have that very quickly please lay your hands now i want to pray jesus A lady in overflow one is going to shout a loud shout for everybody to hear as soon as that shout happens i'll begin to pray for the sick very loud shout from overflow one a strong anointing is coming on that person the moment that happens that's the shout there now i'm ready to pray for the sick in the name Please agree with me, everyone, in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare right now. Those under the anointing, you don't have to bring them out. I'm, I'm praying now. Every spirit of infirmity, please make sure you are hearing me, overflow one, two, three. Every spirit of infirmity, right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I curse you now. I curse you now. Say amen. I curse you now in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit behind every infirmity over anyone's life. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Be healed, my God. The power of God is touching people already. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Overflow one, two, three by the roadside. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Now I command every blood condition. Be healed from it now in Jesus' name. Peptic ulcer. The Lord is healing ulcer right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lumps. All kinds of lumps. Multiple lumps. I command those devilish lumps to live now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing a number of people having um hepatitis the lord is healing hepatitis right now by the power of the holy ghost eye conditions in the name of jesus you're going to feel fire just come to your eyes be healed right now in the name of jesus be healed in the name of jesus 
every pain that has to do with the bones i decree and declare let the power of god touch you right now there's someone you have severe pain around your back just right here your lumbar vertebra in the name of jesus i stretch my hands be healed right now in jesus name be healed in jesus name there's someone you don't hear well with your this is left left ear and then sometimes you just hear like a sharp you know how bees are that sound the power of god is touching you right now in the name of jesus every kind of fibroid every kind of growth in your stomach in the name of jesus be healed from it now be healed from it now be healed from it now now whether i mention your case or not whatever is wrong with you i stretch my hands and i declare be healed in the name of jesus be healed in the name of jesus some of you when you fell under the anointing long before i started praying for the sick you got up and found out that you have been healed now overflow one if they are coming here for the healing please just clear the way for them overflow one overflow two overflow three and the roadside i'll give you a minute those online if you're healed you can you know just just send it as an inbox on our facebook page or you can find a way to post it i want you to check yourself now within a minute or two the moment you find out that the power of god has touched you make your way some of you you get up under the anointing you find out that the pain there's a lady who has a severe case of bleeding go and check yourself the bleeding is gone gone completely and i'm seeing someone heaviness around the chest is just lifted gone like that please check yourself very quickly and come we may not take all the testimonies but at least let's take a few while we are doing that let me have all the prayer requests very quickly god bless you check yourself quickly koinonia are you celebrating jesus the lord is touching people show them where to come look at look at god touching people already please make your way make your way the power of god has touched you those outside overflow one overflow two clear the way for them just come you can stand on the queue there and let's have one or two testimonies god bless you koinonia are you celebrating miracles here yeah. Make your way. Be bold. Don't be ashamed. Make your way as soon as the power of God has touched you. Back pain since hold last on, year. Hold on, hold on, just a moment, please. All make sure if 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 your prayer request has not been collected, please. I want you to wave it. Jesus is still healing people. You just come join the queue. God bless you. Yes, please. Back pain since last year. Can you, you sit for a, a few minutes? Just sit for a few minutes, and then we're done. Let's just hear the testimonies. If as you are hearing the testimony, God is still healing people and i want you to make your way and then come to okay go ahead pastor Alpha. my god the... god is still touching people i'm seeing people being touched even in overflow three overflow three check yourself right now and make your way yes please you go mentioned ahead. the case of back pain she's been having the problems this last month back but pain. she's healed now how long come my dear let's have another mic please anytime we're doing this please technically it should be a standard procedure you should know what we're doing please so that we don't delay unnecessarily how long my dear since last month yes in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare it never returns again by the power of the holy spirit back pain gone forever heaviness in the chest disappeared how long my dear just when you came here in the name of jesus hold my hands um i'm seeing someone you had something like a a growth around your neck check it now you'll be surprised to find out it's gone gone completely gone completely by the power of the holy ghost gone completely in jesus name i declare that every operation of darkness over you is gone in jesus name give jesus praise deafness in the left ear since 2012 since 2012 oh come on koinonia how long my friend a man of god told me about it in 2012 and i prayed but i was hearing those b sounds and i don't hear really which of them put your hand there now in the name of jesus it never never returns to you by the power of the holy spirit yes also you mentioned also how long yes okay where are you from kaduna, sir. kaduna state yes, sir. that's where you are from yes, your state of origin um, no biologically biologically where yeah. are you from i'm from each i mean i'm from state 
there's a reason why I said this. There's a lot. You don't know where you are from. There is a long story. Leave the issue of healing now. Eh? I need to pray for you. Don't feel bad. Huh? Look at me. Where are your parents? Who are you staying with? My mom and mother are with my stepdad at Kaduna. Okay, it's okay. I'll talk to you, eh? Father, help this gentleman because this gentleman is a great gentleman, but there is a lot I'm seeing in your life. I crush the hand of darkness over your life now and I declare be free in Jesus' oh, name. Sir. Koinonia, you are pain. not celebrating. You are so used to miracles in this place. He was feeling the May pain, but you. as you prayed for him, it left. It's gone completely. How long? Since July. July. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord perfect you. Apostle, you mentioned someone with pain at the back. It was her for the past three years. What's your name, my dear? Juliana. Juliana. You mentioned something, the lower... Uh, the the lower back pain. And it affected her left leg also. This pain in Check her back. Check it now. Check it. Check it. Any pain is gone completely. Give Jesus last three praise. years. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, it never returns to you again. Please make sure that we have the request. If you are still yet, if you are still with your own, wave it. Just wave it and an usher will come. Look at that man. And you are sitting quietly there. You wave it and let them know. Pain at the back, completely healed. Pain at the back. You fell under the anointing. Ah, see you looking. In the name of Jesus. It's, it's a good baguette, my friend. Huh? If you fall under the anointing, and your destiny arises, it's a wise bargain. Is that true? In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, never again in your life. The power of God is coming on someone in overflow one. Overflow one. Please carry the person and bring the person. Overflow one. The overflow by the roadside. Overflow 2, sorry. Overflow 2, I meant to say. Ah, look how powerful the power of God is. I said overflow 1 and nothing happened. I just said overflow 2. Then I now went to say. She's had pain on the left, left shoulder since How long, my dear? Seven. Let her talk. How long? 2007. You've had what? I've had this pain. It will come and go, come and go. But today it has been intense. But when you mention the case, the pain left. It's gone completely. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Up, down. Come. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will pray, but the person I'm talking about is overflow two. Overflow two. The overflow by the roadside. So you bring the person. In the name of Jesus. Perfection for you right now. In Jesus' name. She's had serious um, back pain that back she pain. had to start horse riding so that you can correct. But today they asked you to ride a horse? Yes. Who said you should ride a horse? The doctor? Yeah. Or just advisors? <laughs> don't, don't, she's shy. <laughs> the horse, this is the man. It's amazing how you come for Koinonia minding yourself and you are surprised to see people just carrying you and you are wondering where am I going to? The anointing. Amazing. Let me just talk to them and then don't worry do your horse thing eh i'm just happy that you are healed so you can go and ride your horse now for fun in the name of jesus you are perfected completely perfected in jesus name i take away this proverb called ikabod over your life and over your family i'm speaking to both of you now from overflow too in the name of jesus i set you free and I decree and declare that that proverb shall no longer be mentioned in your life. It will no longer be Ichabod in Jesus' name. I'm coming here, but you are the one I'm talking to. Eh? Debbie, it's not the, this person. You hold this one. Don't worry, they'll hold her. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying he is going to use you to change everything in your family. It will be like a dream, but he is going to use you. He's making you a savior over your family. Don't ask how it's going to happen is by the anointing the spirit entered me when he spake unto me that god is going to use you and change everything in your family in the name of jesus yes go ahead she's had severe menstrual pain since she started menstruating that resulted in serious back pain how Came old are you now pain this evening sir how old are you now 21 21 
and she's had severe menstrual pain. Yes. And she came here with the pain today. But Don't the pain believe is gone. that thing. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I cancel it forever. Amen. Say amen. amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, severe menstrual pain goes back to hell. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. amen. Yes, sir. She had headache, heaviness in the chest. Heaviness in the chest. Okay. And then she had severe headache. And as she prayed for her, it totally and, left. And what? Hiccup. She's the heaviness used to make her hiccup. She was even hiccuping during the service. But as she prayed, she's totally healed. God bless you. Look at me. Where did you come from? Kaduna. Kaduna State. You are going back. Eh? Where's your mother? She's in Bauchi. When are you going to see her? I'm serving in Kaduna, so it has to be December. December. If I, if I give you an instruction for your mother, will you obey it? Huh? Look for 1,000 Naira recharge card. Eh? Yes, Send it to your mother to bless her okay. and watch what happens in your life. You just do what I ask you to do. It's not some superstition. Please, you get my point. It's just the law of honor that will trigger something. I release my faith with you. Your mother is going to pray one prayer for you that looks like she's playing. But you watch what that play will do in your life. In she had ulcer, peptic ulcer. As she prayed for her, she was totally... Peptic healed. ulcer. How long? Put your hand on your chest. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, peptic ulcer goes back to hell. In the mighty name of Jesus goes to hell forever she also had ulcer but she also had kidney inflammation she used to feel a sharp pain she's been healed of the ulcer now when she presses the place before press she it. Would feel press it press it any pain no pain gone completely no. come on koinonia may god forgive you may god you people have seen signs and wonders too much to a point that god bless you he had a sharp pain in his left side okay you mentioned it and then he also used to experience dizziness that he would just be standing be dizzy and then slump but as you prayed for him he was totally you just slump like that yeah they may even have to catch it it happened, it happened once august august 26 you just slump like that yes i was falling and then my brother caught me come what if you fall down like the epileptic patient that used to fall inside fire the devil would just wait until you are crossing a bridge then that wicked spirit will come because he comes to steal to kill and to destroy in jesus name i set you free you are free now you are free forever in jesus name back pain disappeared he's had back pain for a long time back pain sir now. yes in jesus name let it go and go forever never to return again in sometimes the two eyes go blind other times only the right one go blind but now he's totally healed he can see with both eyes have you gone to the hospital for this but sometimes you just go blank like that come in the name of jesus put your hands on your eyes i decree and declare perfection it's not just the bones are what give structures to a person doctors tell us that means that by this miracle god is speaking through it right like he's doing the miracle of ezekiel 37 the bones coming back the a restoration of it in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you yes please go ahead so back pain he came here with waist pain sorry waist pain he came here with how long serious pain. 2014 and now he's gone. try to turn it's gone he squatted for me and um, no squat you've not you did it for him yes. you didn't do it for me ah. it looks like you're a footballer go on and go on dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos Kata Branda Kata Bakotos Koto Brekateka Nekata The face of development Lord grant me the